Welcome everybody to Ask a Scientist. I'm your guest host, uh, Eugene DePrince. I'm an associate professor in chemistry in um, Florida State University, and I have our guest here tonight, Ken Hansen. He's also a chemistry professor at Florida State University. Uh, Ken, can you tell us about yourself? I can. So, hi everyone. I'm Ken Hansen, like Eugene said. I'm in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry, as well as affiliated with the uh, Material Science and Engineering program. Um, I'm a photochemist, a photo light matter interaction chemist slash material scientist. I care a lot about light interacting with materials and then doing something useful with that interaction, like solar cells or a, know sensing or imaging or OLEDs or LEDs or whatever it might be I care about all those interactions and so yeah that's what I like to do Wow that's super interesting <laughs> Thank uh, you, Eugene. <laughs> Ken what what uh, what game are you planning on playing tonight I'm gonna play teenage well I'm gonna start with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to the arcade game the arcade NES. game. Yes, this is the actual name of it. It's literally called the arcade game. That sounds great. Let's take a look. So <laughs> this is 1990s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, let's pause and smile for the uh, YouTube video. And then we play. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So the reason I'm picking this one is me and my brother used to play the shit out of this game back in the day. Um, but more importantly, uh, so every Thanksgiving, my family does a movie marathon instead of actually traveling to someone's house. And so our movie marathon this year was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And so we did all eight of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies. That's crazy. I'm only aware of three movies in that <laughs> series. Uh, the original series had three. And then there's the, the CGI reboot. And then there was a couple cartoon movies, as well as an uh, entirely CGI movie. Those don't count. <laughs> Those are the eight movies. And so, yeah, we're excited. But that was a lot of fun. Well, if anyone has any questions, just fire them into the chat. And I will pass them on to Ken. Otherwise, we'll just stare at him playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mediocrely. Remember, this the is mediocre game. gameplay while sciencing. So this game is just a... It, it started out in the arcades, and then they ported it to NES, but it was just a quarter eater. Like, you just go through and things beat you up until you die, and then you put in another quarter. Scuzzbot Wotus has a question. What is your favorite equation? <laughs> Why are we question. opening? That's a pretty heavy equation to begin with. You're actually going to be upset at my favorite equation. Why? There's one I, I learned about when I was teaching general chemistry. It's the uh, equation for capillary action. Okay. So, so you have cohesive adhesive forces that, you know, whether something sticks together or climbs up the wall of a chamber. But there's also a gravity term in that equation. <clears throat> and so... Like, molecular things and quantum mechanics can explain a lot, but they don't account for gravity. And so all your best calculations in the world cannot mimic, uh, or at least ab initio, calculate capillary action. Keep in mind, you Eugene's, got me. <laughs> Eugene's a quantum chemist. We've had this debate before. But that's fun. It's like, it's, it's an empirical equation, but it, like, it blurs the boundary between, you know, Newtonian physics and, you know, quantum mechanics spanning centuries in one equation. We got another question. Julenium says, have you ever done similar research to the artificial leaf? I did actually. I was, it was enti my entire postdoc was based on artificial leaf work. And so I'm a bit cynical about it. I'm going to be upfront about that because I mean, artificial leaf could mean a lot of things, right? You could, you could mimic nature and try to make an actual leaf in, you know, in a synthetic manner. Or you can mimic the process, which is water splitting and oxidation. So basically, if you can turn water into oxygen and then use the protons to do useful work, that is an artificial leaf. But it depends how you draw that boundary, right? You could hook up a solar cell to an electrolysis cell, and it would do that. Now, are you going to call that an artificial leaf? Because that's the best way we have to do it right now. So yeah, I've worked on it. I don't work on it anymore because I think the answer is in better solar cells coupled to electrolysis, which is the electro like basically passing electricity through water, you could do that process already. You just need more efficient solar cells to do it. <laughs> Any cheat codes? Yes, I did do Game Genie for Infinite Lives because you'll have to forgive me, it's been 20 years since I played this game. I'm probably gonna die a lot, but I am gonna beat it in the process, so. <laughs> yes, any purists, look away, I'm sorry. It won't count, just like those other movies. <laughs> 
No, get him. Ecstatica doesn't like old ports of arcade games. I, I'm not sure I understand. They were extremely difficult just because of the quarter eating component. Yep. So you think the game is easy? It's just... No. You don't like feeding quarters? It's the, the killing you for the sake of killing you is frustrating. Oh, I understand. Scuzzbot wants to know if I've tried getting good. I'm working on it. I for think... the next hour of playing this, I hope I get better. I'm here to moderate chat, but Ken's going to go ahead and just read all the questions himself. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, yeah. So here's the great part. So it's a Nintendo There's controller, April. right? It has two red buttons, and that controls jumping and swinging, right? But if you put both of them together at the right time, you get a double swing move. You get that, and that's an instant kill on those guys. So that's Nintendo technology in the works. Is it going to be Bebop or Rocksteady? Or oh, someone else? You ready for the surprise? This is Bebop, right? There's a bro which which one's <laughs> the right remember. one? I think it's Rocksteady. Uh, they I, they come in pairs. I don't know which one's which. Help me out, chat. Which one is he, chat? Well, while we're trying to figure oh. that out, Ken, could you tell us what led you on your path that got you? Sorry. To chemistry. Yeah, to got yeah you to chemistry. It's a quite a Can't convoluted speak. journey, actually. So I was. And my daughter is entering the room. <laughs> Hello, Bowen. Do you want her to say hi? Yeah, she can say hi. Uh, go next to Eugene. All right. Look, a child. All right, everyone, say good night to Bowen. Bowen, say good night. Good night, Bowen. Good night. Say good night. Good night. <laughs> she whispered good night. Sorry about that. Bedtime. <laughs> I told my daughter I was going to work. <laughs> That's partially true. This is science outreach. It's part of your NSF proposal. Oh. Anyway, the path that led me to where I am. So I was like really into athletics as a, like many people don't believe this, but I used to actually be an athlete, especially in high school. And part of that was I was too skinny and small to do that particularly well. And so I got hurt quite a bit. And I spent a lot of time in physical therapy and like with athletic trainers. And so when I started college, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an athletic trainer um, and eventually a physical therapist. So I transitioned through four different majors before landing on chemistry. So I started out in athletic training and then I did exercise science. And there was a very distinct transition I remember wait, in that. Wait, wait, wait. How long was it before you changed uh, majors? Was so I graduated with 160 something credits, so or 180 credits, sorry. So I, I had a lot of classes over five years, but um, somewhere about halfway through when we started to narrow down on major dependent um, classes, I took an athletic training class and the most profound moment in it for me was when they were um, talking about um, ultrasound and how that machine works. And there, there was one sentence in the book that was basically like, it's the piezoelectric effect, right? Where if you run electrical current across a, a certain type of material, it vibrates at a frequency. And you can use that vibration to image, to break up tissue. And that was like a profound moment for me. I'm like, that is super interesting. And so basically every single one of my transitions and majors was just digging deeper and deeper till I found molecules. And so I went from athletic training to exercise science, to biomedical science, and then finally to chemistry. And shout out to my organic teacher, Dan Gregory. He's, he taught organic as a physical chemist. And so he, he wanted you to know the concepts much more than just memorizing reactions. And it really changed my path. And so after that, I went to an RU program at Notre Dame. Then I went to grad school at USC, then postdoc at UNC, and then finally got a job at FSU seven and a half years ago now. It's been a long road. A lifetime ago. We started at the same time. And we both aged horribly. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to point out the product placement in this. 1990s Pizza Hut deal with uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Classic. Okay, uh, Alchemical Pickles says, Have you ever tried to image molecules bound to the metal oxide surface in order to view their orientation? <laughs> that is a really specific question. I well, have you done it? Is. Not imaging. Uh, imaging is kind of hard to do. Mostly what we work with is not planar surfaces. 
and so you can't get direct images unless it's planar. Um, we have done some measurements to try to get insights in the orientation, but not exactly. <laughs> what types of measurements could give you insight into the orientation other than imaging? Um, so if you're on a planar surface, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. There's grazing angle techniques where you shoot light in at an angle, and uh, depending on how it interacts with the surface, <laughs> is that reviewer number two? Sounds about right. Um, but we, we have a collaborator at Arizona who does something called, um, it's a attenuated total reflectance where he shines light through a crystal and it, depending on the orientation of the light, it'll absorb differently depending on the orientation of the molecule. And so you can basically use that to calculate orientations. <laughs> Thank you, reviewer number two. Uh, well, congratulations to Raul Ortega on candidacy. Yes, <laughs> congratulations for passing. I was on Raul's committee, actually. Ah. Yeah, I went to six candidacy exams this week. That's too many. That is too many, because all of you guys waited till the last minute, Raul. <laughs> so this is what I mean. Did he about... at least check with you to see if you were available for the day? Yes, he did. Exam. That was good. Yeah. And it's like, after my final was done, I was available. Uh, how would you compare UNC to FSU? Ooh, in, in terms of what? It's a tough question because your role was very different in those two places. Yeah, and not just that, like, and, and Eugene said this previously in his Ask a Scientist, is that there's greater... I, wait, I expect all of you watched mine before tuning into this one so you could be caught up. Yeah, so you can understand the plot of this one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's more variability between groups at UNC than there is between FSU and UNC. If that makes sense. Like, it depends who you work for, what your experience is going to be. I mean, because after, you know, your first year, you're basically exclusively in your research group. And so it depends really on what group you choose. But with that said, I really like um, FSU. <laughs> I'm not going to badmouth UNC, but I uh, got another, another grant for a new instrument. So basically, anything spectroscopically you want to measure, like time resolved absorption or emission we have at FSU now and we have it in a user facility which is awesome what's time resolved mean time resolved means you watch it over time and so in the time scales we're talking about we're not talking minutes we're talking pico and femtoseconds so really really fast stuff you need to know where electrons are going and how fast they're getting there I'm killing these things too early I should let everyone enjoy the mousers on the screen. That's okay. <laughs> Do they have sledgehammers? What are these? I, you know, I think they're sledgehammers, but like when they they're hit the ground, extent. they look like squeegees. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> trying to wipe the floor with you. Uh, uh, dad jokes. I am a dad. No, no, no excuse. So I watched some speed runs on this. And I didn't know this, but uh, they speed run with Raphael because he swings faster. So they actually accounted for the range on the weapons as well as swing speed. So Leonardo's middle ground. Donatello is a slow swing, but a large reach. Oh, there he is. No problem, alchemical pickle. Ask another. We're done. That's but fine. I'll teach you. <laughs> oh man, look at those graphics. Just the bars coming down the screen. Watch out for those. See hitboxes here? Watch this. Used to do this all the time as a kid and I thought it was hilarious. Because it doesn't hit you when you're in the water, but it goes right through your head. It doesn't seem right. <laughs> no, this game's so unrealistic. Someone should write an angry letter to Yeah, that drives me crazy. Konami. Segway, what are some of the things that drive you crazy in your field? Like, what's your biggest pet peeve oh, about nomenclature man. or something like that? I have several of them. Um, so I have a, I review four to seven papers a month, and I have a document right now that's a copy and paste rant about certain things. What? <laughs> um, did you read, our colleague just published a paper Igor, on yeah. how to review a paper. I did not. I read one so, sentence wait, and it on. said... Does, I don't know how many uh, people are familiar with peer review process in the chat. You should explain it. Well, I'm the host. You're the guest. <laughs> Ken, I'm... could you explain the peer review process to us? All right. So 
everyone's heard the phrase peer review, but basically you do a research study, but it's not enough to do the study. You have to write it up and share it with someone. And so the way we do that is through peer review. You can't just post it in a blog and expect people to believe it. And so there are certain journals that um, basically you submit to a journal that's specific for the topic you're um, interested in. Like if I'm a biochemist, I submit to a biochemistry journal. But if I'm a materials chemist, I submit to ACS Applied Materials and Interfaces. And that goes to an editor. And the editor is the person basically in charge of saying, does this belong in our journal or is it inappropriate topic-wise or is it too boring of a topic, whatever their critique might be. And if they're okay with it, then it goes out to reviewers. And so reviewers are experts in my field or hopefully experts in my field that will read through the paper and say, this seems like it's legit, this seems like it's reproducible, these results are interesting. And if three reviewers, or two of three, usually say, this is interesting enough, then you can get your paper published. Is that? That's and pretty some, good. And sometimes they'll say, they'll say, you know, make more changes and then send it back to me and I want to read it again, because there are some things they might not be able to also, cite my papers. <laughs> cite Eugene's papers. Why is Statica, three? I don't know. No, so they the, the editor will actually order the reviews. I, I think they put the nicer ones first and the, the meaner ones last. That can't be true. Some of them do, yeah. Is there an editor in the chat? <laughs> is, is there an editor in the chat? Uh, what are your feelings on Chem Archive? I have no strong opinions. I, did, I don't think I've ever worked on something that I was worried about getting scooped on necessarily. I mean, we've been scooped before, but... So Kim Archive is a preprint server. That means you put your paper there before it's actually published. Uh, and it was a popular concept in physics, and now it's in basically every field has their own preprint servers. I do it because, you know, I can cite papers in my grants but do or the, in my reports. Do, do the grants. citations carry over? I think... Uh, someone in chat can correct me. I think with Chem Archive you get a DOI, and if you don't change the title of the paper, that can move over. Or I that see. might be the case with. Yeah, I don't know. There's something similar with the Physics Archive. If you don't change the t title of the paper, Google Scholar will know what you're talking about. I see. Oh, look at that ragtony then, too. That is the worst snowplow in the world. Look at that thing. Oh, man. Pizza Hut again. This Pizza is a Hut Pizza Hut again. Park. Name brand park. Are they the only products was wrong? Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> Down the hole. Yes. Now, when you bought the game originally, I actually remember this. It came with the coupon on the back for um, pizza. I am getting rocked right now. Ken, is there anything in your research you could relate to uh, everyday life experiences? Um, anything that has color associated with it has some sort of color chemistry behind it. And so the screen you're looking at right now has red, green, and blue pixels or phosphors or something that's generating those colors. Uh, the color of your clothes is based on dye chemistry that's thousands of years old. Like somebody isolated dyes. I mean, art is fundamentally limited by how advanced our color is and how durable our materials are. And all of that is, is color chemistry. So yeah, anything you see, <laughs> somehow related to color chemistry is my grandiose view of it. I accept that answer. <laughs> awesome. As long as you approve. Yeah, snowmen with rocket noses. This game's so unrealistic. How? Ah! Ken. I deserve that one. I deserve that. Chem archive. I don't... You do it for for your journals, right? Or for your uh, proposals. You just want the paper yeah, out I, there. I, this is an Ivy League education worth the price? That's for, a great question. For undergrad, probably not. I mean, if you're going to go to grad school, it's probably not worth it. For undergrad, at least. What do you think? I went to a state school for my undergraduate. I went to the University of Tennessee. I think I did OK. <laughs> Anecdotal evidence. Anecdotal. Therefore, it's true. True as anything else. No, but I think um, if you're engaged in your classroom and you meet your instructors and interact with them, you can have an experience at a smaller school or a large state school that 
It's just as good as an experience you'd get at an I, school. I will go further than that. If you're an undergrad at a, a PUI, a primary undergrad university, and your group is doing research, you are the researcher. Like, you're not an assistant. You're not washing glassware for a graduate student. You're the one that has to carry the research. So, arguably, it's a better experience in some respects than it is working for a PhD student. That's where I came from. I came from St. Cloud State University, a, a primary undergrad in Minnesota, where we graduated, I don't know, 25 chemistry majors or something like that, but we had active research. You know, it's funny, in Tennessee, we only we only had something like 20 or 40 really? chemistry majors as well. That's crazy. I could just be making that up. <laughs> um, yeah. Question from the chat. Do you have any advice for students in your group who are wanting to go into industry after a <laughs> uh, Why is see, that funny? That's probably one of my students. It's the one that asked me about <laughs> characterizing Because Ken is famous for not giving surface. advice, except <laughs> through chat. Hey. Ken is not hesitating to uh, share his opinion. Industry. So, it's, what's it's, your opinion? It's uh, a sheer number of applications game. Like in the application phase, but getting your resume full of things is the best thing you can do. This is crazy. Many of you might not know this, but like I have, I don't know, five or six former students in industry jobs right now, and they have no one has ever asked me for a letter of recommendation. Not the companies, not the students themselves. They don't care about letters of rec. In academia, it's everything, but industry, they just don't care. That's really interesting. Yeah. I've only placed my students in national labs or academia. And they care about letters. And they care right? about letters. They demand so I was going to give like the opposite in advice. Yeah. That's interesting. So fill your resume with stuff. Yep. Does it matter what that stuff is? Um, I mean, probably not hobbies. Maybe you should no, focus I mean, on papers and does it, <laughs> skills. Does the and impact of the instrument journal matter? skills, maybe. I, I've heard mixed responses about that. As long as you have a reasonable number of papers, it shows you're productive. And then other things are like, you know, you have a tool set that you know how to use. You know, TEM, you know, surface characterization, you know, HPLC or mass spec or whatever it might be. So apparently industry does not do referrals due to liability. Uh, that's Thank interesting. You, What's the liability there? Already exploding barrels. Stay away from it. But I wanted him to explode. Go near it. <laughs> a liability for a letter of rec. I, I don't understand that. But you may be sued if you say someone's good and they turn out to be terrible. The letter writer gets sued? Wow. I mean, all right. Oh, this car is going to come out. Or one of the cars is going to come out. That's crazy. That'd be terrifying if I was legally. I mean, you'd have to say something pretty distinct to be held up in court, right? Oh, interestingly, those. Um, so any undergrads in the audience might appreciate this. So. We've learned fairly recently, and this didn't used to be an issue where nobody paid attention to it. We didn't care about writing performance in class and letters, but due to FERPA, technically we can't do that. That's so, not true. You just have to ask for permission. Yeah, the student has to give permission to say something about their And is that uh, even true? I thought it's a little bit fuzzy if it's your class. I thought it was fuzzy if it's your class. You I, I don't think you can at all, because unless it's with the student, you can't release their grade information. And so the way it used to be is you'd say, yeah, they were in my class, they got this guy, ah, got him. And like that's, for some of our letters, that's all we have to write. But uh, apparently there's more than one scenario where a kid didn't get into med school and they sued their professor because the letter of rec had information from their class. Like, what did you think was going to be in the letter? I don't know. <laughs> Letters matter. Was the take Unless you're in industry. That. Unless you're in industry, then they don't matter at all. Then it's all your resume. And connections help. This one's going to come out. Don't do it. Don't do it. What kind of guns do you think these are? I don't know. Projectile's pretty slow. Yeah, and it's shooting at a downward angle for some reason. It's 
the gravity term. <laughs> it is. It's the G. Count it. We're gonna get him. Two of them that time. I'm already bored of the purple guys. Like they're just they're too easy they're, for you. No, they just do the same thing over and over again. Oh, I'm sorry. 1990s AI isn't smart enough for you. <laughs> it is not. That's what makes Nintendo games great. <laughs> Alright, do you want a question from Reddit? Letters of recommendation are very subjective. Oh. Oh, you can answer that one. You're on admissions. Um, so... They help give... They give it... Why? Well, hold on. Letters of recommendation question first. They give information that's not reflected in your elsewhere in your application. Like they can describe whether or not you drove a research pro project or changed the direction of that project or if you just followed instructions. Um, that subjective information is useful. Yeah, but uh, one of the things they ask you or when we're letter writers is, how would you rate this person versus every student you've ever interacted with? That's a meaningless like that. question. It is. Yeah, that one's, it's, like, it doesn't mean anything because nobody's going to say bottom 50% for anyone, right? It just doesn't. The thing about letters is it's what people don't say that you got to read for or any red flags. Like, there are some inherent red flags in letters. So, for example, if you did research as an undergraduate and then you didn't get a letter from your undergraduate writer, uh, advisor, that in itself is a big red flag. Why didn't you get the letter? Yeah. Did you set something you on fire in lab? Down? We'll assume yes. Ken, what is your favorite spectroscopic technique and why? Ooh. That is a really good question. Favorite one I've done, or favorite one in general? Let's go with general. Um, transient X-ray is a badass experiment. So, for those of you familiar with X-ray crystallography, you put X-rays through a crystalline material, and it allows you to see the structure of that material. Well, the the latest generation of that is transient X-ray, where you find the structure of that material, and then you shine laser light on it and see what the excited state looks like. So after it's hit with light, what is the structure? How does the structure change? And that's information we couldn't get, you know, 15 years ago. But now we can see what it looks like in the excited state. And so if you want to know how structure transforms or how it changes when it loses an electron, you can see that in real time in like, you know, pico femtosecond resolutions. Neat. Uh, Ken, do you currently have undergraduates in your lab? We have one undergrad in my lab. What does your undergraduate do in lab? He is doing a project on quantum dots. He's actually working with Drake Beery, who I'm thinking is in the chat. Um, but they're working on quantum dot-based upconversion solar cells. So he's actually done a bunch about synthesizing, uh, call it annihilator molecules. Um, but yeah, he's synthesizing a molecule, and then when he has it, he's going to put it on surfaces. And then hopefully we make a good solar cell out of it. But he's been in lab for a year and a half now. Uh, one of my general rules is I only take undergrads for research if they're going to work for a couple years, because you just can't do anything in one semester. So what's the first thing you have an undergraduate do? Um, tag along with a grad student and learn instrumentation, learn nomenclature, just get a general feel for what's going on in lab, and that takes a few months. And then they start to do tasks that the grad student would come up with, so something you know they could repeat and get good at, and then eventually they become independent. Why are these guys carrying around spear <laughs> their spears in the city? Just why are they dressed as ninjas? Because <laughs> they're the foot. Stylized bad guys. Have you died yet? Um, yes. Anytime you see me, like, fall to the ground and then have the ring of stars above my head, that is me dying. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> it's okay. What in the world? Yeah, they're carrying bombs. Where do they get those? eBay. 
I don't know. Ah, Oof. I can't... See, I have to let him throw him, otherwise I kill myself when I hit him. <laughs> but yeah, it really depends on the undergrad in my lab. Same with grad students. Like, not every thing we do is for everyone. Like, we do devices, we do measurements, we do synthesis. It really depends what flavor of thing you like doing. pretty good at the double hit. Do you have students that do all three? Uh, I'd say all my students do a little bit of all of them, or typically do at least a little bit of all of them, but they tend to specialize in one more than the others. Because it's one of those things you can't learn everything. Or what were the three? Synthesis, measurements? And devices. Like application, we'll say. We try to get a little bit of all of them. It's one of those, again, you can be mediocre at all of them or get really good at one kind of thing. Oh, are you ready for this? Yes. They must be very strong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> go Vols. That one's for you, Eugene. Yeah, go Vols. Does my group publish on GitHub or post repositories? I... And it's a sad day when I don't push something to GitHub. So yes, we have a lot of stuff on GitHub. Wait, why don't you push something to GitHub? Well, if I didn't do any coding that day. It's, it's a sad <laughs> day. Oh, I see. Every day you put something on GitHub. I get it. Yeah. Like solving um, a Rubik's Cube? Like solving a Rubik's <laughs> Cube. And yeah, sometimes... Uh, I think you... Yeah, GitHub's the only place we publish our code repositories. Right. So this never made sense to me. You ready for some skateboard physics? It stays under you. There's, um, well, there's a rocket, so. <laughs> it's remote controlled through proximity detection. Ecstatica, that is a great idea. There should be a death counter. <laughs> I agree. Oh, I had the clock up too, and I forgot to start it. I'm an idiot. Do you want to start over? <laughs> no, I don't want to start over and kill the foot again. I've killed 421 bad guys. You get a point per bad guy? Yep. That's what bad guy is. Even for the bosses, you get a point. This guy, one point. No break. But I agree. Uh, death counter would be fun. Man, doing this deathless, though. Those guys are something else. Oh. That was stars. A, that was a death. I got it now. Don't don't get used to it. Now it's gonna be deathless. What's your favorite conference to attend? I trick question. None of them. <laughs> exactly. You tried to trick me into flying during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> No, not COVID times. I have a couple of favorites. Um, Gordon Photochemistry is one of my favorites. At any Gordon conference, I, I tend to like those more than... I hate ACS meetings. Sorry, any ACS official in the chat. Uh, but they're just... They're too impersonal. There's too many people. I just... But, like, go to a Gordon conference. You're hanging out with the same people every day. You get to actually know your colleagues. Uh, the other one is IAPS, Inter-American Photochemical Society. That's that's my people, so I really like that one. Um, I, I like ACS when it's in person. You see a lot of people. Yeah. Catch up with a lot of people. But also you see a lot of people. You see a lot of people. And you have to catch up with a lot of people. And normally I just hang out in one session. So it's... Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, but yours is a very specialized discipline, right? If I want to see the talks I want to see, I have to go to, like, 12 different rooms. Yeah. Oh, what was the year where they did it all in one room? And they had, like, headphones? It was the last in-person one I went to. The comp division had all of their talks in one auditorium. <laughs> and we all had headphones that would, so we could listen to our speaker. It was awful. It was awful. <laughs> 
That was so bad. I know no one at cares what I say because I'm the host, but I like. There's this place in Colorado called Telluride. It's a resort ski town. And in the summers, there are workshops there for chemistry. And they are awesome. They're always super, super great. They're very small. And usually they schedule talks like only in the morning so you can go hiking in the afternoon, that kind of thing. It's very yeah. Nice. I haven't been to a Telluride. I need to. You should go. It's like the Gordon Conference, but better <laughs> better sleeping arrangements, right? Or is it still dorms? No, um, it's pretty great. I've, depending on how much you're going to spend. Sometimes you'll have a roommate, but you'll have your own bathroom. I mean, that's the other thing about the I'll rant about ACS meetings all day, but you, you have to pay more <laughs> for less. Like at Gordon, you get the room plus food plus the actual conference for one flat fee. That's cheaper than going to an ACS meeting. What advice would you give your younger undergraduate version of yourself? Moisturize. <laughs> Oh man, I, I don't know. That would, that would imply I want to change something, but I'm happy with how things turned out. I think I would have told myself to take more courses and to tr focus on learning the material rather than just getting a good grade. Yeah, <laughs> which is something we tell our students, but history will repeat something itself. Something about young brains. Yeah. Well, I, I think the problem is like now we appreciate it way more because we see the connectivity. Like we see how this stuff ties together and it's applicable, but you just can't see that until you know it. It's kind of a catch-22. Yeah, that's a good one. Try to learn the stuff rather than just memorize it or just try to get a grade. With that said, we all did it. We all jumped through hoops because we had to. Stop shooting me. I don't remember these from the TV show. They look kind of like um, the dogs, the robot dogs from Black Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Foreshadowing. <laughs> What's your least favorite thing about teaching online this semester? Is it teaching online this semester? No, I like teaching online. I, I, I love using this setup. I like that that was three. I got three with that barrel. Sure, I get wow. killed myself, but I got three with that barrel. And I really liked it for the most part. I mean, I don't get to interact with people as much, and I don't know, the the lack of faces and feedback in the room kind of sucks. Like, you can't hear when people are engaged or laughing or whatever it might be. I'm not going to say they're never laughing. <laughs> Just thinking if you could see it in the chat, if they said, ha ha. Yeah, sometimes you can. Oh, what is your, your favorite? T-M-N-T. Um, movie or game? Because game, it would be this one. I I really didn't like it. Wait a second, there's one. more than one Scuzzbot? There's, there's Scuzzbot and there's Scuzzbot Wotus. Uh, what's your favorite turtle? <laughs> My favorite turtle is Leonardo. Why? That's such an obvious choice. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is that obvious? Well, he's the leader. And he's got the sword. Yes. <laughs> Both of those things. Uh, I say that every stream? Who says that every stream? Why? Wait, what? who would you pick? I don't Raphael, know. Raphael, you want to be the, the angsty one that always no screws up everyone's plans? Like, I'm just brooding, and that's why I create every plot point in the movies. I probably would have said, yeah, I, my brain doesn't work, so I don't remember things. That's why. <laughs> I cannot... Um, I would probably pick Leonardo, but for better reasons. <laughs> what are your better <laughs> reasons? <laughs> no, I respect it, but what are they? I, I'm just trying to be difficult. <laughs> Don't make me be clever. This double hit is just is killing my hand. I'm not used to this rectangle control. You know, I will interject because I saw the question first. I used to think Momo's was the superior pizza, but I think Gain Street is better. No! Ken, what's uh, your opinion? Momo's versus Gain Street? I'm liking Gain Street more now. That's an important question. I think their crust is better. I mean, Momo's fell under new ownership, right? Or am I wrong on that? I don't know. 
What are these things? I think I've eaten it once since March. Well, since the pandemic. Do you remember when you're casually walking down the street and there's a rastering laser gun in front of you? Those, yes, in pre-COVID times. <laughs> Pre-COVID times. When I walked down the street. Ugh. We'll see, vaccines are coming. Oh man, we should set up a... Xbox versus PS5. So this yes? Is, this is why we need, need a, a polling in our chat. Because I want to know Gains versus Momos. Ken, Xbox versus PS5. So I'm a fan of the Halo franchise, so I have to go Xbox. But Halo Infinity is not coming out for another year, so it doesn't really matter for another year. You said this was going to be a deathless run. <laughs> and you took me seriously. Why would you lie? Because I'm not good at this. But yeah, Xbox. I just started with Halo. Halo 1 in 2001 just kind of stuck with this, the franchise. With that said, my, my modern gaming is I pick one game and get really good at it and play it consistently. And that's, that's it. Do you have time to play video games? Sometimes. Mar Shouldn't you be working? Mario Maker is my... Or like raising your family? <laughs> <laughs> I do have some time to myself. Like right now. I'm sharing it with you guys. Thanks, Ken. No problem. All right, now we're in the game of death dojo. Wait, what's your pick, Eugene? For Wii? what? Xbox versus PS5 versus I mean, Wii? I mean, the last PlayStation I played, I think, was a PlayStation 2. So am I qualified to weigh in on this? Explain these guys to me. They look kind of like gorillas. But like one eyeball gorillas. They were at least creative with the bad guys in this game. Were they? I mean, some of these are... Oh look, different purple guys. <laughs> these are not the same purple guys. Being disingenuous to the monkey, <laughs> lightning throwing guys. What is the greatest inorganic complex of all time and why is it Rubippy? I disagree. <laughs> Um, Rubippi is pretty nice. It's well behaved, single electron transfer, reversible, nice transitions, and it's well studied so everyone knows what it does. I'm gonna say Ferrisine. Ferrisine's pretty, it's pretty good. It's, it's the standard in electrochemistry. It's the first organometallic complex. Has a really cool uh, cyclic structure, or a symmetric structure with two, um, Five-membered rings, sandwiching, and iron center. You're just hungry. <laughs> I do like talking about sandwiches. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to say Ferrisine rather than Rubippi. That's the crazy thing, too, is after I left uh, Tom Meyer's group, who's like the godfather of uh, Rubippi, which is ruthenium trispipyridine, I was like, I'm never going to work with Rubippi again. But it's like, well, do you need something that absorbs pretty well, has single electron transfer, you know what it's going to look like in the transient absorption spectra? Rubippi. Ken, did you know they just isolated the first ferrocene anion complex? I did not know that. They reduced ferrocene and that cannot be stable. It's one of those isolated under very particular conditions. That's awesome though. Where was that published? How to argue with a person who does not believe in science. I... Leave the room. Yeah, it's what's what's the quote to like you can play chess with a pigeon, but they don't follow the rules and shit all over the board. That's the that's the problem, right? How do you, how do you convince somebody their mechanism of thought is broken? Like you, you'd have to teach them how to science and then take them on a science journey with you, and it's it's non-trivial. Anti-vaxxers. What's your favorite element? Is it iron? <laughs> it is not iron. Is it platinum? Um, I'm gonna go with Iridium, actually. Mm. Iridium was a big one. Um, especially in grad school, I played with Iridium a lot. It's, it's a rare, it's, it's asteroid metal. So if you're gonna get a ring, don't get one made out of diamonds, get one made out of Iridium. It's also an awesome element, like it's really good coordination chemistry, it makes really good emitters, the electrochemistry is well behaved. You can do a lot with Iridium. Super high density. What's the Isaac Asimov 
series foundation. Yeah. Don't they turn, doesn't turn iron into iridium? Isn't that the, like the valuable metal? I do not know. Is that, is that true? Wrong. <laughs> it's the fifth element. <laughs> it's the fifth element. <laughs> boron? Boron? <laughs> I had to count through on that one, but I got to boron. Uh, <laughs> Nobody asked me, but hydrogen is my favorite. What hobbies got you through graduate school, Ken? Uh, skateboarding. I used to skateboard a lot. Before I was completely broken and my knees were shot, I used to skateboard a whole bunch. Predominantly that. Some video gaming, but I worked a lot in grad school. I was like 78 hours a week. Like My wife, Debbie, was a, a director of one of the dorms, so we lived on campus. So like I could go in and out of lab whenever. Carbon-13 overnight spectra regularly. Like, why not? Sounds like you were fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Like this. This is an original bad guy. The paper mache cat that keeps killing me. Did you try the double sword? I, I can't. I'm not consistent enough. But yeah, also having a good group of friends in grad school helps. Like, in getting along with people in your group, because that's a lot of time and effort and emotion invested into research and projects. It can be tough. Did you ever feel burnt out? Oh, I felt out, burnt out regularly. There were times where I just I had to take, like, vacations. I had to, like, step away for a week and not do stuff, because it does. It makes you feel like not a human after a while. It's kind of crazy. Is school necessary, or can you learn anything on the internet? Uh, no, I don't think you can learn anything in isolation. I think you have to be part of some kind of collaborative effort to think about problems. And so the internet's an awesome resource, but if you're not actually talking about it with someone and like debating it and trying to think of, you know, new perspectives on it, you're just you're you're tunneling yourself to a very specific knowledge set, and it's largely a perspective. You'll end with a perspective you went in with because you're not being challenged. At least not being challenged by another person. Alright, I think I figured these guys out. I also feel like... So, as as an old person, now I feel like I could learn a lot more on the internet than I could when I was not an old person. Something about my mindset has changed. But still, there's a lot of value in just like a five minute conversation with someone. You yeah. might know something you don't know. Someone you disagree with or somebody that knows more than you? I, I just mean for like clarification or something I don't understand. Or having could, to teach someone something? And, yeah, that's, that's a good one. And so would you go so far as to say that school is necessary? Um, I mean, define school, but based on what we've just said is good for you, then I'd say school is the only place you get that intellectual flexibility and freedom to explore new ideas and maybe think in ways that your parents didn't brainwash you to think. Like school is your first release from that, your intellectual freedom. Because crazy coincidence, we end up being the same religion, the same political affiliation, the same blah 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 as our parents, and it's not a coincidence. So yeah, going away to school is awesome. I don't know what this guy is. He's <laughs> like Shredder and Casey Jones. <laughs> Tracy Jones? <laughs> Did I just win with that? I think you did. See, this is how I'm playing. I'm not even, like, using the, the joystick anymore. I'm just swinging. And you died again. <laughs> but his head popped off. <laughs> is that because you're defeating him, or is he well, attacking he starts, you with his head? When he starts blinking orange, he's nearing death. I figured that much out. Favorite solvent? Benzene. I wash <laughs> my hands with it. Wait, to, to drink or do chemistry? I don't I, wash my hands with benzene. Ethanol's good. What do you mean, meh? <laughs> oh, hmm, that's good. Good answer. Favorite solvent. Dichloromethane is a good one. I mean, aside from the cancer part of it and the whole, uh, you know, CFCs in the air, it's just a really nice balance between polar and nonpolar, and it's aprotic. 
Is saponification dangerous? Uh, depends how you do it. If you put sodium I hydroxide... I would like to know why. <laughs> why this is a question. <laughs> saponification is just making soap, essentially. Um, well, I watched Fight Club. <laughs> that is exactly saponification. <laughs> methanol greater than ethanol, ignoring the whole blindness thing. Again, it depends what your goals are. <laughs> Are you gonna get to fight Krang soon? I'll fight Shredder before, I think. Oh, really? But saponification, you can take, like, I don't know, glycerol or phospholipids and just add sodium hydroxide and you can make soap. And it can be super dangerous depending on how you handle the sodium hydroxide. Big Polymer Boy likes your TIO2 work. What's your favorite application you've done? <laughs> He's tired, tired of eating it on a... donuts. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good on powdered donuts. I don't know what's wrong with that. I mean, TIO2 is pretty amazing. Like, it's, uh, it's a very good um, UV disinfectant. Like, you can... I'm just getting wrecked by these things. But if you take TiO2 and put it with basically anything like bacteria or organics or toxins of any kind and shine UV light on it, TiO2 will disinfect those materials or kill the molecules essentially. So UV excitation at TiO2 makes it very reactive and it'll decompose pretty much anything near it. So it's really good in that respect, like water purification and things like that, it's a pretty cool application. We use it for solar cells, but um, I don't know how commercial, commercially viable it's going to be. Oh, we're back. Black Mirror. Tiao 2. I think there's like air purifiers that use Tiao 2 as well. They use Tiao 2 plus UV to try to filter out the air or kill things in the air. But I don't know how effective those are. My parents bought some COVID air purifier thing. Interesting. And? <laughs> Does it work? I have, probably not. They, have, they haven't gotten COVID, they right? They haven't gotten COVID. It Damn. also keeps tigers at bay. Yeah, I was going to say, classic Lisa Simpson. How much for your rock? <laughs> <laughs> have you read it? Does it claim to do something magical with no, COVID? No, they, they told me about it and I just kind of rolled my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so if it makes you feel better. I mean, that's the thing. If they're only using it to make themselves feel better, sure, placebo effect. But if they're like, now I can go to church with a hundred different people, like... No, 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 they're not doing anything foolish. It didn't change their behavior at all. Uh -huh. Like, they turn it on when some... Like, someone comes to repair something in their house. Definitely. I mean, any air filter will probably... Anything that circulates the air and does some kind of treatment to the air, like ozone or UV, will probably help. What's the process for developing theories? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Most of what I do, like, the equations already exist, and we know what the answer is. So I do, I'm a quantum chemist. We uh, develop methods to describe how electrons behave in molecules. And we, everything starts with the Schrodinger equation. And then you have to start making some approximations because you can't solve that equation exactly for general systems. So, like, <laughs> I don't know how to answer insight into developing a new theory, but like the, the grunt work of it is you have an idea and then you work out all the math associated with the idea and then you write the computer program to realize that math. Ken, can you help me? Just generally how theories are formed? Yeah. Uh, Through you, observation? Yeah, you <laughs> see, you recognize some kind of pattern and say, I think this is why the pattern's happening. And equations are a really elegant way to do that. So I guess I interpreted this incorrectly because I was thinking about my... <laughs> you are a my theoretician. Specific, my specific research, yeah. Yeah. But more generally, but that's right. But yeah, it's just seeing a pattern and seeing if that pattern applies generally more general the pattern, or your descriptor of the pattern, the better the equation is. Speaking of equations and stuff like that, can I hijack your stream for a second? Yep, go ahead. I discovered 
<laughs> the coolest thing the other day, it's called Advent of Code. Every day during Advent, there's a new programming challenge. <laughs> and some really insane people can complete the challenge in like five minutes. And then 12 hours later, I submit my solution. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what, is the, what does this show up as? Somebody gives you like lines of code? How, how, how do you It's a word it? puzzle. And then, so it describes, um, one of them was you have a ticket for, oh. or you're trying to figure out where your seat is on an airplane. And you have a whole bunch of tickets with a bunch of letters on them that describe where the seats are, which seat's yours. And then hmm. there's an input file that has a whole bunch of character strings. So you have to parse the input file and then figure out how to analyze everything. It's kind of fun. <laughs> if you think sorting problems are fun. <laughs> yeah. Most of them, most oh, of the like problems end up being like input, input parsing heavy. Who's, who's hosting this? Like who's coming up with these? I have no idea. It's pretty fun. Do you get to see other people's answers? Uh, I think there's a subreddit associated with it that gives hints and stuff. I haven't... I don't need hints. <laughs> but so I, 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 mean, haven't I haven't looked at that. Some, some of the answers are better than others. Uh, yeah, in terms of efficiency. Like, one of them... Uh, my code worked, but it took like 12 hours <laughs> to get the answer. <laughs> it took 12 hours of running to get the answer? I ran it overnight, yes. <laughs> Your answer is brute force. Oh, so For you that have... one case, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, man, I'm just getting worked. My dad asked me once, if the Earth is round, then wh why do rockets go up? I tried explaining gravity and why it's advantageous to watch your rockets close to the equator. That's the simplest way to address the question in simple terms without having to go into a lecture. So this is a, f a flat earther question. Um... So what is why do rockets go up? I mean, up is a relative term. So rockets go away from the center of mass of what you're standing on. So if you're on the top part of that center of mass, it's going to go up. If you're on the bottom part of that center of mass, objectively. What was that? It's sound? like did something happen? Uh, no, I don't think so. It, it's a frame of reference problem, and that's that's one of those things you, you like. There there are certain assumptions they're going into that argument with that you have to address before you can talk about what they actually want to talk about. And pinpointing those misconceptions is the hard part. Like it's the same issue we have with teaching new content for the first time. Like there's something that might be leading you down the wrong path, and we don't know what it is. And so yeah, I think that's their issue. Reference. Does that make sense? Yeah, are you even trying? I am trying. I'm trying to get beat up by this guy and put my quarters in. Let's see. Done. Did a great job. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, why is it advantageous to launch rockets close to the equator? Oh, man, I don't know that answer. I don't know the answer That to one that. is... If you were here for our astrophysicist, David Collins, he would tell you. I think it's something to do with the momentum, but I don't know that for sure. That's a really good question. He's using the Earth to throw the rocket off the Earth. I mean, we use the moon to slingshot that around. That makes sense. <laughs> if you slingshot around the sun, you can go back in time. <laughs> Wait, which moon? That's Star Trek for? I think so. Yeah. So here's Krang for you. It's just like I remember. The brain and the belly. Did you see the new movie? Ninja Turtles? Yep. No. I've actually only seen one and two, the old ones. You haven't seen the Turtles in Time when they go back to feudal Japan and... Nope. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to ro launch your rocket over the poles. Melt, melt the ice. <laughs> Man, there was a great uh, shower thought on Reddit. Uh, it was basically, as soon as humans land on Mars, the average intelligence of Mars will be exponentially higher than Earth. Because <laughs> we're sending the best and the brightest. But then somebody brought up the point that uh, at any given moment, the intelligence of Antarctica is higher than any other continent. So that's a movie. There was a movie when we were in high school about a, a moron who went to Mars. 
<laughs> what? I cannot remember the name of it. Here, can you be more specific? Maybe. I'm just getting rocked here. I need to watch the speedrun. Somebody's doing this deathless. You're gonna look it up? No. A moron went to Mars? <laughs> Is that that's the premise of the entire movie? So it's, <laughs> stupid guy goes to Mars and Google brings up John Carter. <laughs> I don't think that's right. <laughs> Could be right. <laughs> it was Rocket Man. Oh man, we're on Shredder. This is it. We're an hour in, we're gonna beat this. So the thing about Shredder in this is you have to knock one of their helmets off, but not and then after you get the helmet off, you gotta hit the other guy, but not the one with his helmet off. It's very tricky. Yeah, because then he's gonna get close. Because if you accidentally hit him. Oh, and that's an Against instant force? death. Yeah. Wow. No, and it turns me into a turtle. I should get hit just so I can show you it. But you'll die. Worth it. Name of favorite scientist slash inventor. Dash inventor. Ooh. That is a good question. Yes, I am a turtle, but it'll turn me into a non-mutant turtle. It'll turn me into a normal turtle. Favorite scientist. I, I, I don't know how to think about that question. Like, there's people like Tesla that are, like, romanticized quite heavily. What's that? It's a good answer. You didn't... You, you missed the turtle race. Oh, don't hit him. Did. Oh, we got spam in the chat. I would like to become famous. <laughs> Message deleted. Well done, Colin. Oh, there we go. Boom. I Re saw it. That reverted. Was great. Reverted. Was it worth it? Was it worth my death? Yes. Favorite scientist. I mean, there's so many cool stories. Boltzmann? Tell us one. Boltzmann is pretty cool. Tell us a cool story about Boltzmann. I mean, he started statistical mechanics, right? But he also killed himself because of... Didn't all of the statistical me mechanicians yeah. kill themselves? Yeah, anyone that started early th thermodynamics killed themselves. Which I don't have the heart to tell my Gen Chem class that when we start Chapter 16. But it's true. Oh, God. This is just terrible. It's not even a fun fight. Oh... <laughs> I deserve that. What movie or TV show gets your discipline wrong? Oh. So you're using my own question against me. God, again. So gets it wrong? Basically any CSI, like, forensics show where they put a molecule or they put a sample in a mass spec and then a molecule pops up on the screen. Like, you have any idea how hard it is to characterize a composition that's mixed like that. Yeah, enhance, exactly. <laughs> Let's make a GUI to interface with the same thing with the mass specs that they run. They're just terrible. It's just so unrealistic and like those shows created a generation of kids that are like, I'm gonna do forensics and then until they realize what forensics actually is. And it's it's, it's like Dexter. <laughs> it's just like Dexter. Blood splatter everywhere. Our daughter jumped off the couch and hit her head and there was blood all over the wall in the bathroom when my wife was helping clean her up. And I was wondering what Dexter would think of that. <laughs> and so you Would he be able to predict that it was child's forehead blood? Well, he's completely imaginary, so yes. He's the <laughs> he's real Sherlock Holmes of serial killers. Um, I can't bring the cat on the screen because it's not my cat and it will scratch me. <laughs> and it's also gone. Would your cat let me pick it up? Probably. Hmm. If you could catch her. 
Next time. I am just getting <laughs> rocked by this. I can shut the door. She'll be Oh, god damn it. I hit him, too. So, both of them have their helmets on now. What? It's because I accidentally hit the wrong guy. Ugh. So I can't hit the helmetless guy. Is there any data to suggest that there was an increase in chemistry majors from baking? All the hype around Breaking Bad. Ooh, that is an interesting question. Because you left out the other half of that question. Which, which show gets your discipline right? And the answer is Breaking Bad. Like, Breaking Bad gets synthetic organic chemistry right. I mean, for the most part, they're using some jank techniques to do it, but like... That's right, Ken is <laughs> naked in his lab all the time. <laughs> I mean, that's only part of it, but... I mean, they did a lot of stuff in that show, like the HF in the bathtub. Sorry, spoilers if anyone wants to know, but you can't put hydrofluoric acid inside a bathtub because it'll chew through the ceramic. Like it's that's that's what HF does. The other one they did was the uh, mercury fulminate, the uh, explosive rocks. You know what I'm talking about? Did you watch Breaking Bad? Yes, but I don't remember that. But he basically had a crystal material that when it smashed against the wall, it exploded. That would actually do that. It's very shock sensitive material. I don't know if I'd carry it around in my pocket, but that was very very real. What future scientific development are you most excited about? Ooh. Emergent complexity, is that too big? I mean like self-aware robots? <laughs> <laughs> no, like uh, there's a phenomenon that goes across every discipline and if any of my Gen Chem students are in the chat that they'll know what I'm talking about because I dedicate a lecture to this. But basically across every major discipline there are individual units that sum together to give you a bigger thing. Oh, we beat turtles by the way. In zero seconds. Amazing. <laughs> oh, man. There it is. Roll credits. Wasn't the explosion a little exaggerated, though? Yes, it was probably very exaggerated. I don't know the exact translation of a crystal that big, but yeah. But it would still, it would, I mean, it would definitely, you would be like a shock bang. I don't think it'd rip a wall off. It is a new world record. New world record. <laughs> what are we at? An hour zero. and seven minutes. The world record's 30 minutes in this game. All right, what should we move on to? Roop. Let's do Tech Mobile. Oh, that's a terrible idea. Why is that a terrible idea? I love this game. All right, so this is Tech Mobile, one of the early football games. As far as I'm concerned, this is the pinnacle of, of sports gaming. <laughs> <laughs> this is before EA There's took no, over and yeah. bastardized it entirely and released the same game every year for 20 years and pretended it was a new game. But yeah, this is some quality football gameplay. But I kind of loophole the game and I'll show you how I do that. Anyway, emergent complexity. So it's this phenomenon where you take individual building blocks and you put them together and some bigger um, event emerges, right? And so this happens with neurons in the brain. This is ants making an anthill. This is- Birds flocking. Yes, uh, murmuration of birds. This is water molecules making ice. This is, it's all over the place. It's the stock market. It's, it's everywhere, but we don't know how to describe this or not, not describe it, but we don't know how to make these predictions. Like, we don't know how to take, um, you know, these certain number of units go together, and all of a sudden they give you a complex summation of those units. And so some are hypothesizing there's a fourth law of thermodynamics that should describe these emergent phenomena. It basically says, if you have this number of units and this energy, complexity will arise. But it's not fully understood. So figuring that out is going to be big. So this game, I just run the same play over and over again and just kind of go as fast as I can to the end zone. This is exciting. We should watch this for two hours. <laughs> no, just one game. I need one game of this. So back to that uh, advent of code, one of the problems was um, you get on a ferry and there are rules for who's going to sit blocked. In, in what seats. And it was very similar to whose game of life? Conway? Conway's game of Conway's life, yeah. Conway's game of life. Uh, but every one of the puzzles would die so it would come to a steady state eventually huh. uh, and then that gives you the answer 
So the way I figured out this game, so those of you not familiar with this, you can pick one of these four plays and they can run one of these four plays. If I pick their play, no one remembers how to block and they kill everyone. They knock everyone over. Um, but if you don't pick the play, then you have to do something. So I picked Ronnie Lott here, and I pick the one play where he gets blocked, and he never gets blocked on any other of those options. This is scientific method in application. Learn the rules, and then game the rules for your advantage. That makes it seem like not a fun game. Oh, it's super fun. You try to run up the score on the opponent. Oh, there. Scuzzbot linked the uh, advent of code. Ooh, I went way too far. You forgot to start the timer, didn't you? <laughs> I'm not going to start the timer for Tech Mobile. There's no speed running Tech Mobile. <laughs> there could be. I, there might be. I, I honestly don't know. It has a built in timer 32 True. seconds. It has a built in scoreboard. Speed run would be scoring less. <laughs> <laughs> Right, it takes too much time to go through this stuff. All right, no, we got this interception right here. Are there any crazy factoids in your field you could share with us? Oh, factoids. Um. One of the most fun, so I, I use a lot of like energy transfer and excited states and how they transfer and things like that. One thing I learned in grad school is, so inside the sun you have fusion happening and fusion, fusion releases a, a lot of energy and part of that energy is in the form of photons. And so if hydrogen or helium inside the nucleus or the center of the sun releases that energy, it takes 10,000 years for that photon to exit. And it's because it's bouncing around between those atoms. Like the density of atoms is so large, it takes 10,000 years for, for a photon from the center to get out of the sun, which is pretty crazy. Huh. Technically, your research is related to photons, so that is <laughs> from your discipline, I do I solar cells. <laughs> I, I literally measure those photons when they get here, so I need to know how long it takes them. So it takes 10,000 years to exit, like, the corona of the sun, and then it takes eight minutes to get to Earth. And then it takes, you know, so fractions you have, of a second to... Yeah, you're measuring 10,000 years plus eight minutes plus three <laughs> yes. femtoseconds. You are rate limited by sun generating or photons leaving the sun. So when you submit a proposal to a funding <laughs> agency, do you have like a 10,000 year limit on your... <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. That, that, that was kind of a It was the start of a joke. I feel like there's a joke there. I just need to work on it. I agree. Uh, there is a speed run for a one game win, Ken. Is it? What is it? 758. 758. I don't think you're going to get there. Like, they probably just run around and kill the clock the entire time. Ken, what if your wife wanted a diamond ring? Um, we could get a synthetic diamond ring. What if she wanted one from, like,. <laughs> from slave labor in South Africa, That's, I'd probably yeah, divorce my really wife. Think about where it came from. No, we probably should think about that. This is an ongoing rant in my general chemistry class. I think I everyone here knows it is. It's on the page for Ask a Scientist Gaming. Is it? <laughs> I think it says Diamond Industry is a scam or something like that. <laughs> is that in the rules? I think it is in the rules. But yeah, diamonds are a scam. <laughs> Mike Wilson going long. Did you just turn around to taunt him? <laughs> no, he, when, when they grab you, you turn around in the mm. animation. So you have to remember this, Montana and Jerry Rice. Oh, too far overthrown. So on my cheat sheet here, it says, what was your I made it moment as a scientist? But I don't understand that question because I don't think you've made it yet. <laughs> Uh, that's that's a fair critique. <laughs> Man, I have a bunch of I made it moments. Like there's, you know, <laughs> um, grad school, there was one particular...
project we were working on, we saw this weird phenomena where you extend the conjugation of a system and it, it blue shifts, which means it goes to higher energy when usually it should red shift. And we got together, this was Luke Roskop, an undergrad friend of mine. He went to Iowa, I went to USC for grad school. And we were in his, on Christmas break, we were in his parents' kitchen hanging out trying to figure out this problem. And there was a light bulb moment. It's like, oh, it has to do with the orbital alignment and the conjugation of the system. And that ended up being a Jack's paper. And it was laser, later cited as Hansen's Rules. So that was one of my, like, mm. I, I made that moment. Uh, Ken, what are PBAs? PBAs. Could we have some more context? PBAs. Is that the, the, the polymer thing, the initiating agent in polymers? It's like in uh, water bottles and things like that. I don't remember what the acronym stands for, but it's, uh, I think that's what you're talking about, right? The, the stuff in polymers PBA when free. they say PBA free. Yeah. Yeah. It has something to do with how the polymer initializes, but I don't know the details of that. Justin Kenimer would know that. I'm going to have him on here at some point. Is he the big polymer boy? Yes. Oh, no. The, asking the question? No. It's Robolox. No, no, no. I meant there's a big polymer boy floating around. In the <laughs> I cat. doubt that's Justin. Could be. <laughs> there was a question about synthetic diamonds in Ask Reddit today or yesterday. All I could think of was you. I'm surprised I missed that because I might have ranted. <laughs> I regularly drop by Reddit just to drop some, some mind bombs. Ah, Big Polymer Boy is not Justin Kenimer. <sighs> Calm down, Bronco says, Hi, Ken. I was visiting MIT today and saw a pamphlet mention solar cells using perovskites. Do you use perovskites in your research? And what are perovskites? So perovskites is a very specific class of material. Believe it or not, it's like 70 years old. It, it follows a formula ABX, which means you have one A, one B, and three Xs, and you put them together in a particular form, and you get a crystalline lattice that is perovskite form. And so perovskites have been, become this really hot buzzword topic as of late because they turn out to do really well in solar cells. And so, do what? What do you mean? They do well in solar cells. They, they, the material they is a good go absorber. Good. They, they do make them go good. So they absorb well, and they convert that light into electricity really well. And so they've had a record efficiency of something like uh, I don't know, it's twenty-two or twenty-three percent. Maybe it's a little higher than that. What does that mean? Twenty-two percent of photons so, get turned into electricity. What does that? 22 yes, mean? that that is what that means. And so, twenty-two percent of the light photons coming from the sun that hit the surface of the Earth get turned into electricity per the area of the solar cell. And so perovskites turn out to be pretty good at doing that. And so it's a really hot area. Um, arguably the wave on that has crested. Like it's not, it's it's turned from an academic exercise into an industrial one, trying to actually produce like solar cells that have really long lifetimes and last forever. And so uh, if I was starting research now, I, I wouldn't get into perovskites because it's so saturated and so many people are working on it. But there are still a bunch of unanswered questions in perovskites. So. so no, I don't do it. Yes, I'm on a few papers of other people that do perovskites and we measure things for them. Does he mean Prussian blue analogs? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, perovskites are super popular right now. So what's wrong with someone doing a graduate student wanting to work in that area? There's, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just very... Ton. So like when you're on a review panel for solar cells, 80% of the proposals BBA. are going to be on perovskite related things. And so it's, it's hard to stand out in that field. It's hard to do something really impactful and new in that area. I, I would rather work in something that's niche, but you could like maybe create an area or come up with something actually new. But that's, that's my preference in research. Ali Boo Woo too says we were talking about BPA. PBA? BPA. Yes. What is PBA? 
<laughs> when I was an undergrad, moths are a big thing. Moths are still a big thing. And 30 years later, there are two commercial applications of moths. So, I don't know. I. So, what's the new hot material? Material-wise. I mean, pressure studies are getting to be pretty popular, like doing high-pressure measurements of material. Because it doesn't take a lot of pressure to get some really cool properties. Like you, things like superconductivity and like zero resistivity uh, transitions and all sorts of cool stuff like that. So I think taking old materials but applying pressure to them is going to be a hot area. Uh, oh, I just got juked. suggestions for emergent properties? Ooh. Um, you're talking about emergent complexity? Uh, the, the starter book for that is actually called Emergence. I, I think that's the starter book. At least that's the one that was recommended to me when I first started reading it. So the title is literally Emergence. And it'll walk you through the examples, you know, trends in thought fairly recently. Well, at least recent as of five years ago. Um, so yeah, really fun area. I'm out of beer. Are you out of beer? No. Are you telling me to go get you some? No. <laughs> Look at how fast that guy's running. Did you see that? He was so not messing fast. around. He was so fast. All right, I'm going to step away from the chat. <laughs> Moderation, I mean. Sounds good. Ah, there we go. Touchdown. All right, I can still view chat questions. Prussian blue, is Prussian blue a perovskite? That's not an ABX form, is it? Ooh, when do you think graphite will be mass produced and incorporated into electronics? I mean, graphite is mass produced. That's that's pencil lead. Graphite's the easy. I think what you mean is graphene, right? So graphene is basically one layer of graphite, and that's the one that's really like the sexy topics about, you know, it's thermoelectric where it turns heat into electricity, and it's high conductivity, and it's semiconducting, and it's going to do a whole bunch of interesting things. I d I don't know what the the viability of turning that into a commercial application, like. The way they found graphene initially is they used scotch tape on graphite and they literally exfoliated, like put the tape down, pulled off layers, and they had graphene or single layers or a few layers of graphite. But that's a, I mean, that's a terrible way to produce graphene on scale, right? So if I had to guess, I would say if, if graphene's ever going to be viable in any commercial way, it's going to have to be like synthesized from the ground up. Like you deposit carbon on a surface and you grow graphene layers or you deposit some molecule and like polymerize it into a graphene sheet. Cause you really need to be able to produce it on scale and make, you know, uniform large monolayers. It's not a trivial process. So I think that's a, that's an engineering problem at this point. Uh, yes, it did. And Scotch tape has won several Nobel Prizes, gra graphene being one of those Nobel Prizes. But yeah, that was, I mean, that was hot too. It was like, when was that Nobel Prize? That was something like 2016, 2017. But it's like they published the paper and then five years later got a Nobel Prize. That's just a crazy turnaround in terms of getting Nobel Prizes. What does graphene do under pressure? Oh, come on. <laughs> so yeah, this is this is Tecmo Bowl. If you guys haven't seen this game before, you literally pick the same plays over and over again and just <laughs> march downfield and score. Thank you, sir.
<laughs> Why not have fields full of people pulling tape off blocks of graphite? <laughs> Thousands of jobs creative. <laughs> we, we have a job solution here in chat, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Minimum wage job. Pulling graphene. Sounds exciting, huh? <laughs> oh. No, I don't know how they're going to solve that problem. I mean, it's the same issue they had with buckyballs, right? Buckyballs were going to be the next big thing, but like getting buckyballs and nanotubes like purified on scale. Like when you talk about any technology that needs to actually solve a problem, it has to be produced in mass quantities, like the McDonald's of chemical production, where it can be everywhere and super inexpensive. And if it can't be, you're not going to solve any problems at all. Right, so if you need a 12-step synthesis, that's awesome for pharmaceuticals and you can charge that much money. But if you need 12 steps to make, you know, a molecule that can be in a solar cell, it will never be cost effective. It'll never be mass produced and it'll never solve a real problem. You'll learn stuff along the way, but like commodities of scale are nothing to be balked at. Like they matter a lot. Duh. Did you see that? Did you see me miss him? Ah. <laughs> We're solving problems today in chat. A field full of people just pulling graphite. <laughs> and I'm sure that graphene would be super pure. <laughs> oh man, I'm risking the shutout right now. I gotta get it together here. It's the longest piece of tape someone's ever used to make graphene. <laughs> Somebody Google that. I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> Oh, here it is. Defense. Big stop. Big stop. Change sides. No, everybody's here for the shutout, and they're going to get the shutout. We're, we're going to goose egg. Uh, yes. You should start investing in scotch tape. <laughs> That's what's crazy. Like, scotch is it's a brand name, right? But there, there's literally a well-known scotch tape test. It's, it's does it adhere stronger than scotch tape does. And that is a actual publishable test. People will know what you say when you say scotch tape test. Oh, some people. <laughs> yeah, some people. Uh, the other one is the hammer test, which, what do you think the hammer test is? Yep. Hit it with a hammer and does it explode? And it's a stability <laughs> test. That, that is literally it. How hard <laughs> do you have to hit it with the hammer? I mean, it's, it's somewhat subjective. Scotch tape. I mean, you should have invested in scotch tape like 50 years ago because they are a rock steady company. Maybe Apple. It's 3M, right? Who did scotch tape? Is that 3M? Yes. <laughs> yes ish. So I think we can all agree if we had unlimited resources, we would try this fields of people pulling graphene. But specific to your research, if you had unlimited resources, what would you What would I do? do? I just want to point out, I won the game 69 to 0. Nice. Yes, <laughs> nice. That's a nice victory right there. <laughs> I wasn't born 50 years ago. Me neither. No. I may look like it. I got a notification a couple weeks ago that my Yahoo email account is 20 years old. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. No, I have a Yahoo Mail older than some of my students. Several layers of wow. And yeah. No, why do you have Yahoo Mail? It's actually my spam mail account. Anytime I register for any website where I need to purchase anything, Yahoo Mail. <laughs> so, yeah. San Francisco won the game. Good job. That's great. Man, what should we go through next? Should we do Mario Maker? Should we jump? So we can jump. I don't know how to do that. We can jump to a truly terrible game, which is NARC, or we can switch to Mario Maker. Any opinions in chat? Yeah. <laughs> jump to Yahoo Mail. You guys want to see me play Yahoo Mail? What do you think <laughs> of what SpaceX is doing? Oh, Mario Maker. Nope, Scuzzbot said NARC. We have one to one. We need a tiebreaker. Ali Boo Woo, too. Can you break the tie? <laughs> oh, oh tie we have a tiebreaker. 
All right, Mario Maker it is. Sorry, I just got to switch the inputs. So remember what I said, I only play like one game at a time. Mario Maker is my game of choice right now. But I'm not going to play Endless Garbage. Look at that guy. Did you see him? Which guy? You're a little... <laughs> oh, my character? Me. Yeah, let's go. So this right here, that is what my wife thinks I look like in Mario World. <laughs> she got the, the, the white gray Which hair. Which one's the real you? <laughs> The posing is perfect. It's on point. <laughs> All right. So I'm not going to play Endless Garbage. I'm going to play Super Expert. We'll do weekly courses. I've beaten the all-time ones, so we're going to go with weekly. We're going to see how this goes. I've never actually played this on stream. <laughs> Definitely the posture. Yes, she got the posture right. That is how I typically pose. Oh, man. 1.54% clear rate. You ready? All right. I like um, the Proof La La Land. It's pretty good. Oh, no, I have comments on. This is not going to go well. It's not a bad first try. I'll take that. So for those of you not familiar with Mario Maker, it's basically anyone can make a level and they can upload it online and then people vote on whether they like it or not and then they just, you can play it. Ken, what's your favorite local beer? <sighs> I like the, I mean, it's been a while since I've gone anywhere and had a local beer, but uh, Proof's uh, Mango Wheat, I like that one. But I, I do don't like have, wheat beers. I do like wheat beers, which is why I'm drinking blue moon right now shit that's gonna cost him <laughs> shake your head at me I lost my chat window because now I'm full screen oh nice ask questions that Ken can't see <laughs> yeah Eugene will filter them and I'm sure he'll do it in an honest way why would I lie what do you have to gain everything <laughs> and nothing man i love this game i've been playing this for so i bought a wii because of mario maker one because i watched a lot on twitch and then i got mario maker two and this is what i've been doing for like two years now big boy Pal big palmer boy doesn't know what he's talking about he thinks mango wit is killer he agrees with you yeah what's wrong with that <laughs> it's such a subjective thing you're going to be opinionated about it Oh, I hate the start of this because I have what to be on, I have to be on point at the start and it's just annoying because he's moving. It's a lot of momentum changes there. If light is real, how come our eyes can only see a <laughs> tiny portion? <laughs> if, if light is real, uh, evolution, evolution. We only need to see a tiny portion to live and survive and reproduce. So evolution selected for those creatures that could do those things. And so we're really sensitive to green because we uh, primates in the jungle and whatnot, but there are other creatures that need to see UV and so they have developed that trait. All right, checkpoint. Nice. I was probably supposed to hit that. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I thought that was going to be, uh, what is it, the, the Will Smith's son? How can something be real if our eyes aren't real? Some, some, somebody knows that quote. What did he say? What was the movie where he was on... Earth, but it was deadly to humans. After Earth. After Earth. Classic. The movie was not good. <laughs> I mean, it Earth. had some fun ideas in it. 
After Earth, based on a true story. <laughs> That's not true. Oh. Didn't expect that one. And the reason I started watching Twitch was actually Mario Maker. Ah. Oh. That one's a bit jank. <laughs> How can mirrors be real if our eyes aren't real? That's the quote. <laughs> <laughs> How can mirrors be real? I don't know how to answer that. Like, I feel for him, though. Like, can you imagine if we were growing up now, how much of our garbage would just be spewed all over the internet for all of history? Like, we said a lot of stupid shit, but it was in the privacy of our own home. I never made any mistakes. <laughs> anything wrong. Or Oof. offensive. Oof. Mm. Too high. <laughs> how can mirrors be real if our eyes aren't real? I mean, because you, you do think you're, like, just profound as a teenager, and then you come to the realization none of that is true. Why? <laughs> but why? <sighs> I'm sober enough to play this, though. This gets hard. Do you want uh, hmm. a question from Reddit? Yeah, Have you let's read do one it. Of these already? Let's do I it. I think I started to, and then didn't read. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Hobo Tea Party <laughs> says, with the development of Tesla solar roof, of the Tesla solar roof, is the industry moving towards smaller cells that can be embedded into existing structures slash surfaces for a more decentralized grid, or is the push for larger, large solar farms to more closely mirror the existing grid structure? Sorry, I'm bad at reading. It's a pretty jank part there. Um... <laughs> Hobo Tea Party, you win the name game. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, man, I don't. I don't necessarily have a strong opinion. So there's there, there's a problem in the alternative energy community where we try to sell our research like what I do is the solution, right? Solar cells are the best thing because I work into solar cells and I need money for solar cells. And so you should give me money for solar cells. And the problem is that the solar cells alone aren't the answer, right? It's going to be hydroelectric, geothermal, plus solar cells, plus wind, plus, you know, everything else, and even some fossil fuels. Uh, the same debate exists within the solar cell community because there are, you know, the solar concentrators, right, where you have all of them localized in one location, or you can have your household solar cells. God, I keep jumping into that saw. And the answer is it's going to be a combination of both, right? Because you can't, if you're in downtown New York, you can't possibly have your own solar cells. There's just not enough surface area in New York City to power people. Momentum is weird Streets there. Streets and roofs. Yeah. And, but even then, even if you cover every roof and every street, you do not have enough power. And so for them, it's going to be, you know, have a, a solar station out in you know, backwoods New York and feed that electricity in New York City. Whereas, like, for those of us in Tallahassee, we could feasibly power our own houses because there's enough sunlight and it's delocalized enough we have surface area. So the answer is it's going to be both, right? It has to be a combination of those things. Yeah, momentum. This is embarrassing. <laughs> is it? Do you have a maker ID? <laughs> I do, but I don't actually make any levels. Why, what do you want to look up? Do versus games? <laughs> Take on challengers? Well, hello, the legend of Tingle. <laughs> if I'm reading that correctly. We'll say yes. You want to do these levels? And I love when people are playing uh, Mario Maker on stream and trying to beat levels for the first time, but somebody in chat looks up the level and races them to it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's have that race. <laughs> and I may not be sober enough to beat this level. We're going to see. But let's keep going with the questions. I got another one from Reddit. If you know. I always enjoy seeing the pick, pick up a week. Oh, that's Instagram. fun. Yeah, that's, that's entirely run by my students. I have very little to do with that. I only print them and put them on my wall at home. 
You know, I really thought your last one looked like creme brulee. No one, one person liked my comment on it. I was sad. <laughs> you took that personally? I, a little bit. I, if Alex is in the chat, it's his fault he didn't like it. Because he runs our, our Twitter page. Or it didn't look like creme brulee. I don't remember which picture it was. Well, I, you kind of have to suspend your ability to see depth. And then it looks like... All right, we got past the saw. What do you think is going to happen now? You're going to die. I am going to die. Oh, or no beat way. the level. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Somebody go on Eugene's Twitter and like his creme brulee comment, or he's going to take it How personally. How many people are here? 15. 15. You can get 15, 15 likes. 15 likes. You can get 15 likes out of that. Let's see. <laughs> He's watching it in real time. Someone, I don't see any. someone, save him! Hmm. Oh man, a two percent clear rate. Right? This looks like a speed run. We're gonna see how this one goes. Have y'all continued to study TTA? Yes, we still do TTA. What is TTA? TTA is triplet triplet annihilation. Well, what in the world does that mean? It means you take two triplets. Combine them. What's a trick? Oh shit, I just lost that. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to get into the, the rules of spin statistics, but TTA, it's a process of up conversion. And so. What is up conversion? God, stop talking and I'll answer questions. <laughs> um, so, up conversion is this idea where you can take low energy light and combine it together and get high energy light. And so. Start your timing? Oh, for each level? Alright. There we go. Um, but you can take two low energy photons and generate a high energy photon. And there's a lot of interest to do this for like solar cells and bioimaging and all sorts of stuff. Um, and it's a really cool process and it basically takes two uh, spin jump. It takes two excited states under a particular condition. Those excited states combined and they give you a higher energy state. And so my group's really interested in like assembling materials in a way to do this in solar cells. And we've been pretty successful at it, but still a lot to be learned. This game's so unrealistic. I demand a refund. Is it free? <laughs> no, it wasn't free. You have to pay for Mario. You could play Mario 35, that one was free. Oh my goodness. Ah! Speed runs, man. Speed runs. Oh, a Rob is there. <laughs> Alex said no to liking your tweet. <laughs> uh, thank you, Alex. That was perfect. <laughs> he wields the power. I, I'm only the spectator in this. I got a like, but it's not for that. Not, not for that tweet. Hmm. Oh, that slowed down. I appreciate it. Oof. Oof, indeed. Oof. I love the creativity of this. Like, people have taken Mario to another level. What's the most memorable moment of your scientific career? Man, getting this job was a big one. Like, that's a kind of a once in a lifetime scenario. I'm trying to focus. Got a, lot of, got a lot of jumps. Thanks. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to do it. Uh. I'll take it. <laughs> also, also an underappreciated yeah. tweet. No, e Eugene needs his internet points. <laughs> Our fake internet points really, really matter to us. <laughs> uh. Uh. Everybody likes recognition. It's true. We thrive on it. Man, did you see that research study recently where it said, like, kids who spend something like, I don't remember the exact number of hours, but a certain number of hours on social media are more likely to be depressed by, like, three or two or three fold? That's the least surprising thing I've ever heard. I mean, it's not surprising, but it's good to see the research is coming out and yes. saying that. Like, it's, it's terrible. Like, Facebook is poison. It's just bad for you. 
Do you think the Budipi molecule has been overstudied, or do you think there is still so much to learn? I don't know about so much to learn. I think there's applications for it. I don't know how much new stuff we're going to get out of Bo Dippy. Like, it's pretty well known how you can substitute it and control it. But have you put it in a cavity? <laughs> Somebody's put it in a cavity, mm. I'm sure. Facebook is internet cancer. Uh, I gotta start over. But Bo Dippy itself, I, man, I don't know. Like, you can learn new applications, but I just don't think... I think we know how it behaves, we know what the transitions are, we know what controls the triplets. But you could do new things with it. That's where I'd be excited, I guess, if I was working on Bo Dippy. I am under jumping. What is this? What is this? All right. I don't know if this has been asked before, but what's the least interesting element in the periodic table? <laughs> least interesting. <laughs> it's probably hydrogen. Neon. <laughs> Why neon? I don't know. Too many electrons. <laughs> Helium. It's inert. Helium. There you go. Boring. It really kind of is, but it all is also central to uh, fusion, so kind of important. They're all exciting. <laughs> They're not all equally exciting. Let's not delude ourselves in this. To somebody. To somebody. <laughs> helium is. F helium does some cool stuff. You Too can make noble. helium hey, droplets, yeah. and you can do uh, uh, like Bose-Einstein condensate, and get all sorts of weird properties. Wasn't there a, a paper that said you can make? Um, wow, I hit that edge. You can make uh, helium superconducting if you apply enough pressure to it. So you can do some crazy stuff with it. Just gotta make it really cold and under high pressure. How hard can that be? This makes my head hurt. Why? I'm just an old person. <laughs> What's going on? Oop, turned around too early. It's gonna cost him. There are a lot of things. This is visual just spam. Where we got this. I don't remember what happened after the door. How did I die? That's how. Ah. Ah, that was it. That's the end of the level right there. Damn it. Z jump. So those Z spin jump. It's really cool. The Mario Maker community has come up with a language of indicators to show what's coming next. Ken, are there any scenarios under which you would become the world's foremost expert in something that could, like, save us from a disaster? <laughs> there are very few things that I would be the foremost expert at. Maybe metal ion linked multilayers. And how is that related to saving the world? Uh, if, if those were somehow the weakness of a invading alien species, I, I think I could provide insights on how to defeat that. <laughs> um... That is an excellent question. Thank you. What's your favorite experimental technique? I guess we he answered the spec, spectroscopic technique earlier, but now you can do anything. <laughs> um, favorite technique in general. So let's say non-spectroscopic. No light. No light. I can't do light. Um, can't do any wavelength of light. Uh, sure, you can do... Like, NMR really, is I, light. It's microwaves. Um, okay, nothing optical or x-ray. Or IR. It's left. Mass <laughs> spec? <laughs> is there it, you go. Is my answer mass spec, then? Because you narrowed out spec. most... It's underappreciated, but most characterizations are optical. Which is weird because light's not even real. <laughs> How can light be real? <laughs> Their only weakness. What else would I be an expert on? 
I mean, that's the thing about a world foremost expert. There's, there's, I mean, 20 versions of me I could name right now that have roughly the same knowledge set. I just have a very particular application of that knowledge set to the How stuff I know. How did we get stuck with you at FSU when we could have had one of the other 20? <laughs> I mean, oh man, do I want to do a, this is a Super Mario 3D world. Timer. Oh, that wasn't bad. That was eight minutes for that level. All right, I'm gonna run to the bathroom. You are up. Do your best impersonation of Ken for the next three minutes. Oh, hey. <laughs> you like molecules and light. Photophysics. Do IR. Any questions for me? You guys wanna talk about anything cool? My group is doing pretty well, thanks. I mean, I never see them because, you know, COVID. So I see everybody like once a week in a Zoom chat and that's about it. Everyone's good. Yes, I'm really glad Marcus joined. He's great. We were really lucky that he, um, that he applied here after his RU. If you looked up loneliest, saddest stream, you might see this. Oh my goodness, how many lights is the right number of lights for a Christmas tree? I would say around 3,000, maybe 3,500 for an eight foot tree. Great question. Hey Ken, what's the right number of lights for a Christmas tree? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever makes it glow at 5,000K. No, I don't actually know that answer. Sun? <laughs> no, it's color temperature. Uh. <laughs> that is a really good question, though, and worth answering. All right, let's do it. Super Mario 3D World. I never played this on the original. I only played this on Mario Maker, so we'll see how this goes. When you do your transient absorption measurements, do you use a static cell or a flow cell? Uh, it depends. Um, if we're doing nanosecond, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you're trying to do femtosecond, it's going to matter. Oh, come on. Get up the up pipe. Um, but yeah, we have both setups. Uh, for the femtosecond TA, we have both a flow cell, which moves solution through at a reasonable rate so your sample doesn't die. For those of you not familiar, if you're doing femtosecond TA, the intensities are really high. So you're essentially blasting your sample with a huge amount of light. And that's a huge problem if your sample is sensitive to light. And so what you do is you move the sample around. So if it's thin film, you raster it. If it's a solution, you circulate that solution so the same spot isn't hit over and over again. But nanosecond TA, the intensities are lower. And so it's not as big of a deal. So it depends which measurement we're doing. It's weird. It's a different kind of Mario, that's for sure. Oh, timing was terrible there. <laughs> Why nothing in the gas phase? Because that's hard. I, I'll, I'll reserve that to the gas phase spectroscopists. That's what Ellie Boo Boo Two was. Is. <laughs> was that Bridget? <laughs> Might be. That's awesome. I gas phase is hard. Come on. No. I missed that jump. I deserve that. Gas phase is hard. Okay. 
is there groundbreaking is there a groundbreaking discovery expected in your field in the next five to ten years? My field. Um field in general, I think the the biggest breakthrough in photochemistry and which is my field, the broader is going to be in the use of photochemistry and synthesis, like to make molecules with photochemical. Wow, you see that momentum die? Using light to make molecules in unique ways, like photo induced electron transfer, proton transfer, energy transfer, making molecules that you can't make just blasting them with heat. I think that's going to be a really fun major area. In terms of solar cells, I don't know. I'm a bit skeptical in that front. Like, we have the materials right now to make solar cells to power the planet. We just need to make it cost effective. Like, we could take those and make them better at what they do for cheaper, and then we've solved that problem. So I'm not sure solar cell, at least there's not a chemical problem necessarily to solve. There are some, but I think the bigger one's gonna be manufacturing and production and then uh, encapsulation and lifetime issues. How do you deal with samples that tend to aggregate in the OD region, regime that you need to get good signal? Oh, it depends why they're aggregating. Aggregating in solution or aggregating in a solid state scenario? Because you can always put them inside a polymer or put them inside some host matrix that'll break them apart. It's very specific problem solving. Scuzzbot says that solar cells are an engineering problem at this point. Um, the solar cells we have available now are, I agree with that. I, I think even with the technology we have right now, I think it is an engineering. It's a manufacturing and then industrial engineering problem. And we can solve those problems. There's still stuff to be gained by new materials and whatnot, but I don't know if we need to necessarily. And these on switches are just killing me. Ugh. All right. So this long jump thing is a new mechanic in Mario for this particular version. Like in <laughs> Mario 64? No, the, do you see the, like, it's a bumper jump. And yeah. so watch this first jump, that one. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's that in Mario 64. Yeah, that's true. The, the 3D one? Yep. No, you're right. What's your favorite fitting program? Uh, I like Origin, just because that's what I learned and that's what I use, but that is by no means a endorsement for it being inherently better than the others. Like, there's some open source ones that are pretty good. They're not as, like, shiny and well-polished, but they get the job done. <laughs> Gotta love Mario where it's just like grind it. Just like play it over and over again. Eventually this will work out fine. Sounds like graduate school. <laughs> it is like graduate school. <laughs> it's exactly like graduate school. I like that you can blow up things by running into them in this that type of jump. I feel like I shouldn't have to hit the wall there. Is it screwing up the timing of that jump? Ah. Alright, we're in. Checkpoint? Nice. Oh, <laughs> we've so got... To continue the analogy, you just passed your candidacy exam. <laughs> I didn't need that coin, but I'll take it. Stressful, isn't it? Oh shit. He's done. Smushed. Have there been any recent papers in your field that raise suspicion? <sighs> Man, there was one in the... God, there was a retraction recently in JAX where the postdoc just made up all the data. Um, and I don't remember the author's name. I know his name, I should know it. Um... 
God, they retracted the full paper, though. And I don't know how that came about, whether they, they found it themselves. Because there was one issue like that in Triplet Triplet Annihilation about two years ago, where the, the PI basically emailed everyone and said, hey, my postdoc, we, we can't reproduce this data. We think the postdoc made some of it up. And then they actually went through and said, we can't reproduce it, so we're going to retract it and we're going to investigate. And yeah, it was crazy. But it was the most honest way you could deal with that scenario. Because as a PI, you can't necessarily know that they're messing with data. You just can't keep track of every measurement and yeah. What about your field? Do you guys have any? Me? Yeah. Uh, I can't think of any recent attractions. Ah! Should have jumped there. <laughs> I did not. Man, that would suck. graduate though. school who Put a paper on physics archive about Don't start high temperature over. super con conductivity and some I I can't remember what the material was. Mm -hmm. And then it became a thing on Twitter too. It was a thing nobody believed his results. Uh, I actually don't know what happened with it. I I don't think the paper was ever published. <laughs> it just became popular on Twitter. Well, I mean, I think it was people were skeptical of the results. Aha! Uh -huh. Hit that spring. Nice. Alright. Man, that's devastating, because, like, I know the person that got the, the retraction, and it's like, what would you do? I mean, you wouldn't know if your students made something up, would you? No, I actually have one paper where the postdoc made a couple of mistakes in a calculation. It didn't change the results of the paper or anything, so it doesn't matter. But it wasn't like artificial, it was just no, a genuine it was, mistake. It was a mistake, and it was, like you were saying, it's hard to check every number that a postdoc produces. Alright, what was that at? I did not start the timer on that one. Alright, Koopa Mansion, let's do this. <laughs> Is somebody racing me on these? Because that would be awesome. Let me know. That's a good question, though. Like, if, if somebody's transparent about it, it shouldn't hurt their career in any way. Nope, that was the wrong way. But, like, if you try to hide it and confront people about it... So when I was writing from um, chemistryblog.com, the, the main... Uh, the person who created Chemistry Blog, Mitch Garcia, he found an example of somebody making up, I think it was TEM data, but he contacted the, the primary author and they're like, oh, if you publish this, we're going to, you know, sue you for defamation. And they went just all retaliatory on it rather than just accepting, you know, maybe we made a mistake because it was obviously Photoshop results. Hmm. And so they did the exact opposite of what you should do in that scenario. Nope. He's not making that jump. <laughs> it was close. It was close. He almost had the height. But like, as long as you're transparent with it, like, the community shouldn't hold it against you. See, these Koopa levels where they're like, you have to shoot the Koopa torso the right way. It's annoying. Oh, I grabbed the shell instead of dropping into it. Yes, the T images I talked about in class, that is exactly the right example. I have like a, I don't know, brief ethics section in one of my classes, grad school. Um, but yeah, you can see the images are clearly photoshopped. Not even photoshopped, like MS painted, where they like copy and pasted things and made them look like they were a particular structure. It was really bad. We should have an ethics class, graduate course. The gripe committee, uh, or like, doesn't matter. Like a Probably don't want this all recorded on the internet. <laughs> like a, a general soft skills slash ethics class. Uh, we've we talked about um, combining scientific writing 
ethics and writing, ethics and research, all into some kind of seminar for first years. Seminar? Like one credit? Yeah. Or you can make it matter. Okay. <laughs> like, when the discussion comes to the full faculty, I will you gladly, can say that. I will gladly convey that message and then be shot down. <laughs> well, the whole thing's going to get shot down. Oh, you did it. Nice. That was a good one. Two minutes, 53. Not bad. What? Uh, Legend of Tingles University requires ethics course. Yeah. Like, NSF has some kind of ethics, like, training or something like that for anyone that's funded through it, right? But, Correct. But for the university to have a formal program would be very useful. All right. Let's keep going. Ethics and science should be cross-posted cross with policymakers' course. Ooh, I deserve that. That was a two-bouncer. So this is, like, space gravity. You want another Reddit question? Yes. Secret M... Secret Embers, which is a pretty good name, but it's no hobo tea party. <laughs> <laughs> says, can you talk a little bit about upconversion and its application in solar cells? I think you already talked about upconversion. I talked about upconversion, but not its application in solar cells. Um, so if you do an analysis of solar cells, which is known as the shockley Quesser limit, it basically says solar cells can only be so efficient. And that answer is about 33% with normal sunlight there's another guy coming out there um and so one of the major losses for that is light that's transmitted through the cell and it's it's a balance between voltage and current and i won't get into the details of that but basically you either get voltage or current but you don't get both and so you need to balance the two and that balance gives you a 33 percent efficient solar cell and so one way around that is to take the light that's transmitted light that goes through the solar cell but somehow get it back into the solar cell so it can be harnessed. I don't know how to do that part. Is that guy supposed to come out No, somewhere? maybe do a little jump and then do a big jump. Mm. Shit. Nope. <laughs> so yeah, the idea is take that transmitted light and somehow convert it into light that's not transmitted, something that can be absorbed, and then harness that. And so if you do the math on that, you get a um, 43 to 45% efficient solar cell. And that's the theoretical limit. And so keep in mind, a 33% theoretical limit equals a, I don't know, a real 25% efficient solar cell. So 43 would get us nice. That was a spin jump. <laughs> Probably should have had a spin jump there. Timer. <laughs> You're just going to pretend the last 10 minutes didn't happen? No. 10 minutes? It's like 3 minutes. Give me uh, some credit. It's like 10. <laughs> it does Could feel photo like... photomechanical effects be used for energy conversion? Yes. Short answer. Oh, I'm supposed to land on him. I mean, photomechanics is... That's a hard... So, those of you not familiar, basically you can take light and convert it into electricity you can turn it into heat you can turn it into work um, and photomechanics is turning it into work like moving something with light and so um, theoretically it's awesome uh, in actuality it's not a very popular solution right now this is interesting I'm not listening to anything you say. Sorry, I'm, I'm distracted as well. That was really hard. First tried. No! All right. Did you finish answering that question? I think so. My group has a contingent working on photomechanical polymers. So polymers that when you shine light on them, they bend. And I think the real interest in that is not solar energy or like harvesting energy, but like making passive actuators and things that can function with, you know, line of sight type control. 
and that's I think that's where the big idea the big applications of photo mechanics are going to be not necessarily in harvesting but in applying man this is a no joke level are there problems on using a method kind of like ATR to increase light's ability to travel around in the cell to absorb more light in a dye solar cell. Uh, solar cells in general, there's a lot of wave gu guiding phenomena that you can do. So like if you just use normal barriers and things like that, you, there's only so much you can harvest because light gets guided out the side of the solar cell. So if you like roughen the surface and make it all wavy, damn it, I missed my window. Witted Chimp, thank you for the follow. Where did you see that? <laughs> it's on the ah. screen. <laughs> I have to I'm play. Looking around like an idiot for whatever made that noise. <laughs> oh shit! I missed my. I, I missed they your died. Exit. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, there are all sorts of uh, surface roughness techniques you can do to maximize your harnessing. Uh, coincidentally, the same technology is used in like OLEDs, because if you take a normal OLED with a flat surface, the um, the efficiency of outletting light towards like whatever person is looking at it is not that high. And it's because it gets wave guided out the sides. It's kind of amazing to me that you refer to it as technology and it's, ah, I don't know, scuff it up a little bit. <laughs> exactly. Well, scuff it up in a very particular way. Like yes. there's betas so you can guide it and maximize it. Like that's where the like manufacturing engineering and industrial engineering really come in. I do not know how to do this. This is pretty bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. It's like I have to count the number of bounces. I don't want to count. I'm here to drink and play Mario, not count. And talk science. Science, yes. Problem is I like it, and I'm, so usually I host this. I've never been the player in it. But I realize that if like the game gets intense, I lose my train of thought entirely, and I may or may not have answered the question I was asked. <clears throat> So that's your job. <coughs> Missed it. Man, but how many people are in chat are happy the semester is over? Because I'm ecstatic. Looks like none. <laughs> no, it's everybody it's, wants more classes. It's stressful, man. End of the semester is just a battle. Oh, so I missed it. Final. What? Bummer. The, the grades are due tomorrow by, uh, I guess it depends which Legend University. of Single is not here. Yeah. I think that's that's Jacob. What's that's the, uh, University of Minnesota. What's the craziest interaction you've had at in person? Ask a scientist. Oh, man. I, me and David Meckes had one kid, and he came back several times, but he was convinced that a fruit-only diet was the way to go. Like, fruit-only <laughs> citrate would cure cancer. It would cure all sorts of things. There's some kind of guru out of Miami that, like, he's figured this out, and somehow scientists missed it. Like, this was the key thing that everyone should know, and he was convinced it was true. And the kid looked emaciated. Like, he looked like his eyes were sinking into his head because he was genuinely trying a fruit-only diet. I remember he described whatever his next endeavor was going to be, and who... What, someone else who was there who wasn't you or me said, you are going to die. Yes, exactly. It was like, I'm going to fast for seven days and only drink something. I think it was, it was like a water-only diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was bananas. That, that kid was... Eh. And here's the thing. So, like, I'm a chemist, right? And David Meckes is a, a biologist or medicinal chemist. And, like, so between the two of us, we know this stuff, like, from the molecules up. We, like, know this infinitely more than this kid. And it still didn't phase him that we were like, you are very, very wrong. He was just convinced that we were somehow like brainwashed by big pharma. Like we had some kind of agenda that we were like, oh, 
clearly all the scientists missed the variable of fruit in every one of their studies, right? Like that was the big thing. <laughs> and here, here's the spoiler for everyone. Like if it's something super simple, chances are scientists didn't miss it. <laughs> I mean, there may be scenarios where that happens, but something that ridiculously simple. Have you tried putting fruit in your solar cells? <laughs> yeah, have you tried rubbing fruit on it? Does that <laughs> cure the injury? Like, nope, I'm sure somebody tried. Here's the thing, alternative medicine, <laughs> when it's proven to work, is called medicine. And there's no secrets behind that, like that's a true story. <laughs> anyway, that's that's the craziest interaction because it, it ended with like I literally had to tell him because he was talking about vaccines being bullshit and I'm like, you are a danger to yourself and the people around you. Like that is genuinely what I think. And so, Ecstatica, did you pass your candidacy exam? Fruititarians. <laughs> uh. Oh man, I actually have another interaction. Um, it was a guy who seemed like genuine curious to like, he wanted to debate religion, but not really debate it. Kind of just like, how do you feel about religion? And I, I, you know, I talk about these things and I'm very open on my p position on those, but it ended with him like, I'm going to say a prayer for you. And the dude just stopped and like literally started praying for me on the spot. So that was super awkward and uncomfortable. I'm getting wrecked by this level. Oh. <laughs> I did not change my mind. The grades are up. Grades are submitted. So whatever you had on Canvas is what is officially submitted to the university. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, I'm screwed. This is hard. I'm not good at spin jumping. The fruit guy takes the cat. I don't know. Praying for me on the spot. Like, because I gave him a testable hypothesis. I'm like, yeah, all right. That's, that's like not a matter of life and death. Fruit I, guy. I mean, it is if you think fruit. was in rough shape. Any tips for an oral exam? Uh, if you don't know something, say you don't know it. But at least try to figure it out. What? Did I miss a, a switch somewhere? But don't just make things up. Well, or, oral exam, the goal of the people examining you is not to, like, give you a gotcha question. They want to push you to the boundary of your knowledge and see how you deal with being in that uncomfortable boundary. Because it is a threshold where it's like, you are not going to know something they're going to ask. And they really want to know how you deal with that. And so your best bet is, like, here, I don't know what the answer is, but here's what I think it's going to be. And show like a logical train of thought how you think that's the answer. That's a much even, better answer than even, even if you're wrong, well, I sat through six squalls this week, so. <laughs> even if you're wrong, as long as you can show that you're thinking about the problem in the right way, you are a PhD candidate, right? You, you, you think like a PhD chemist. So that's my, my advice. I just get wrecked by this level over and over again. See, if I had consistency in this game, that'd be good. So where am I missing the P-switch here? See that? Or we're not P switch, but but the, the red blue yeah. switch. Try again. I know, but watch for it. What am I hitting that I shouldn't be hitting? Is it the one on the left? Yes. Damn it. Candidacy exam. What sucks about candidacy in graduate school is everyone will be like, after they've passed, they'll be like, oh, you don't have to worry. It's not going to be that bad. And for the most part, your advisors know ahead of time who's going to pass and who's not going to pass. Doesn't matter. Still stressful. I deserve that one. Man, the fruit guy. Ask a scientist. We've had some, like, there's bad interactions, but there's also some interactions. 
One of my favorite was this guy that came up. He was like a he was a trucker transporting something, and he saw Railroad Square Park and like in person Ask a Scientist events, and he swung by, and he he opened the dialogue with, um, "What's with all this global warming bullshit?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be one of those." But he was super receptive. Like he he listened and he he was excited to talk about it, and he was very reflective and like. I asked him questions. What? Ec- ecstatic, I think maybe you're hitting a piece which you shouldn't be hitting. Yeah, I think it might be the last one. I don't have to hit that one. That's how they get you. You get tunnel vision. Yep. <laughs> do you need to hit that one? Yeah, I do need to hit that I need to hit that one and the next one for sure. Maybe I'm wrong. Man, I'm so, I'm so glad grades are in, though. Semester is done for me. Did you submit your grades? I did, but I didn't teach this semester. So Still. it was like the three the satisfactory three. grades for my students. <laughs> for graduate group. PhD yeah. candidates. Tell us more about the fruit guy. Yeah, I, the trucker guy. Trucker guy. Um, I don't know. It was just fun. It, it was like... Like, he was a smart guy. He understood what I was talking about. So I shouldn't hit this next one. Is that is that the consensus? I yes. shouldn't hit that one? Yes. But he was very receptive. And it, it, I think one of the things that really got him, I'm like, so you're telling me 200 years of the Industrial Revolution has done nothing to damage our environment. And he just had to reflect on that for like a moment to think about all the factories spewing shit into the air. And like, it was a, it was a turn... It was a turn in mentality for him. Like, he didn't have to think about CO2 as this abstract molecule. He just had to think about, you know, the Industrial Ugh. Revolution and all sorts of garbage getting into our air. And that was it. Like, he he, he turned around on that and was very a friendly, collegial interaction after that. So, yeah. All right, so I'm not hitting the next one. Is that what we learned? You can try. No, I have to hit that one. Why did you have? Why do you have to hit? Because that one has to get through for me to get mm. to the end. What am I missing here? Have you ever played Mario before? Have you tried getting good? I'm trying. I also hope Trucker Guy's faring well. So, like, I hit that. Am I crazy? Do you, need, do you need that one to get over to that ledge? I guess I might not. That's, I'll try that jump without the, the edge. Ugh. I'm ruining it. You are faring well, trucker guy. Me too. It's fun to ask a scientist in person. We also had return customers, as we do for the online version. Thank you for coming back, all of you that have. Um, but we had this set of twins that were like graduating FSU. We, we thought they were much younger than they were, but... I can't make that jump without... Hmm. Is there a hidden one down there that you can't see? Like, do I have to hit that switch again? There's nothing. Can you wait longer to hit the switch? This guy's about what it says, just wait. Just wait here. <laughs> They're just trolling me. So if I sit here, the switch is going to go. <laughs> they do. That's the most dick move ever. Oh, it's coming out. <laughs> the switch went. Maybe I have to hit it twice. I don't know. All right. I'm going to try this a couple more times, but I'm going to... 
reeks of troll. Right? That there's no way that can wait. What happened that time? I I heard the switch go. Yeah, no, it went. What happened that time that was different than every other time? Alright, so there's three of them. Maybe you didn't destroy one of them? Do you need do all three need to survive? Oh yeah, that wait, no. Shit. How did you do it that time? I don't know. I don't know what's different this time. <sighs> WTF indeed. Alright. We got this. No, we don't got this. <laughs> Sorry, that was just terrible. Alright, we're gonna execute this time. We have 35 Easy. minutes to, f to beat this. We still gotta beat Narc. <laughs> no. No, we're going to beat this level, and then we're going to play some... We're going to close with some really terrible Nintendo games. Or a really terrible Nintendo game. Even if you beat this, I, I'm not going to understand why. <laughs> oh, that wasn't good. That was crazy, right? Fruit guy. Fruit guy. He will be forever known as Fruit Guy. I never saw him again. Curious what happened to him. What in the world? Where did that come from? Oh, we got it. But we where got was it. the switch? Doesn't matter. We got it. Really? I agree. It's because uh. of quantum mechanics. <laughs> tunneling. That was clearly a case of tunneling. I don't know, those it's, spiky balls were pretty I, big. I mean, do I boo this level because of the jankness? I, I don't know. Boo. That was an 11-minute victory. All right. 19 minutes. All right, you ready? We're going to go to NARC. Do you need another beer? Uh, no, I'm good. All right. We're going to switch to NARC. Okay. get there. The screen's warming up. No signal. Not due to your host's fault. Uh, right. Why does that look like that? Because it's terrible. He left. What a chimp. I know nothing about DSSCs, but I'd, my instinct would say, that's impossible. Maybe it was harnessing dark photons. If it happened repeatedly, then you discovered dark photons. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are on to NARC. So this is the game that, like, when your grandparents said to random people, what game should I get my kid? This was the one that was in, like, the $3 pile. Absolutely terrible game, but something me and my brother played quite a bit just because we had it. Um, Timer. Yeah. <laughs> The, dr the war on drugs has done many terrible things, one of which being the creation of this game. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way he walks. He's got some sass. Oh, so here's what's great about this game. So Nintendo, you have the two <laughs> buttons. You have... What oh, are they ready? throwing at you? They're shooting oh, at they're me, shooting. but I can arrest them by standing by them. Okay, so, so Nintendo, you get two buttons. You get A and B. 
So if I you, feel like there's like a cyberpunk joke in here somewhere. <laughs> if you tap B, you jump. If you hold B, you squat walk. If you tap A, you get a rocket. If you hold A, you get a gun. And you have dogs. You just shot a dog. I know, because the dog was going to bite me. I will shoot the dog that's going to bite me. I don't know why you were making fun of this game. It's great. <laughs> this game. Uh, uh, you know we've lost the war on drugs when we How create many games bystanders like... have been shot? <laughs> By this? That was it. <laughs> But I, the, the stereotype of these guys, you ready? Hypo Man. <laughs> Guess what Hypo Man does? Shoots needles at you. <laughs> you. I'm gonna let him hit me next time. Did you set up the Game Genie for this one too? I did. <laughs> it's, uh, okay. I haven't fit it live, so we're gonna beat this game. Cause you need to see Big Boss Man. Ready? You've beaten this game before? Yes, uh, of course I have. How? Okay. Speed struts. You just run as fast as you can. It's pronounced speed struts. <laughs> it's still oh, full, full screen, screen for Mario Maker. Oh, hit NES on the, the keypad. Uh, I knew it looked funny. So now I have to kill somebody and get a key card. See that? I shot a dog again. <laughs> this is truly oh. terrible. There's chemistry Arrest. happening in this. Is there? Oh yeah, there's there's cooking in the background. Oh, there it is. Key card. Done. You're you're bleeding viewers, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is a truly <laughs> red, green, and blue solutions, please. <laughs> red is an element. <laughs> Iron. <laughs> oh, man. Blue might be copper. <laughs> copper, copper, which one? Cop two copper plus. two? Yeah. Copper two. Copper two chloride. Yeah, I'm talking to a theorist. <laughs> you know chemistry beyond theory. I know, I know colors. Oh. So, the thing about this game is I'm doing it for me, not the audience. Busted. 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 What's your favorite optic on the laser table? Um, flip mirrors. Flip, flip mirrors. Mirror uh, flip mirror is basically a mirror that's hard mounted to the table, but it has some kind of... Oh, we're getting into a car. It has a, a mechanism where you can basically flip the mirror up or down, and the car's gone. <laughs> Ecstatica, I would argue, why arrest? <laughs> when you could shoot. shoot. <laughs> is this is this in America or not? Oh. It's not clear. So these guys I can't arrest, but I can shoot. Or I can just outrun them. That works. <laughs> or I can shoot them. <laughs> Why would you do that? You said it's why arrest when you can shoot. Yes, it's it's war on drugs. War on drugs has done several things really well. It's spent a lot of money. Uh, um, it's arrested a lot of people that probably shouldn't be in jail, and it resulted in the creation of the game Narc. So all terrible things. This is when the war on drugs peaked. <laughs> I don't know. 1990. When did the war on drugs peak? Whenever this game was made. <laughs> So the drug dealers have a helicopter? Yes. Like, police don't, but the drug dealers do. <laughs> They're dropping bombs from the helicopter. Uh, my other favorite optic are polarizers, like quarter wave plate, half wave plate polarizers, because there's so much you can do with them. Like, in terms of the number of experiments, like, you know, hit magic angle, you get one thing, do parallel, perpendicular. It's something we don't do a lot of in my lab, but. I mean, probably should have. All the anisotropy stuff is polarization dependent. And it's they're relatively cheap optics if you don't have too high intensity of a laser. And you can do a lot of things with them. Circularly polarized light, also awesome. Yeah, getting fancy up in here. <laughs> should I try not to run into anything? <laughs> 
Look at this, it's just zero to 60. There's no halfway in between. It's just either all the way out. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll walk the rest of the way. Good old magic angle, agreed. It is magical. Do you know the math behind magic angle? I don't even know what the magic angle is. Uh, it's, it's basically where you can get two dipoles to not interact in a particular way. It's the angle between them. It's entirely based on geometry. Like you can do this with high school geometry calculations. Is it 90 degrees? No, it's 50. Oh, somebody correct me on this. 53.7 or something like that. Or 54.7. I should know this. I just failed my qual. I should probably know it too. Oh man. So one of my grad students got asked the qual question. How long is a zirconia oxygen bond? What's your guess? One point five. Not bad. Chat, anyone have a guess? <laughs> I did know there's a two thousand five remake of this game. I, I actually found it while I was searching for the 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 um, the uh, <laughs> version of it that I'm playing right now. It's like, it's it's basically the exact same game, but super high resolution. Two kilometers. It is not two kilometers. <laughs> what is it? It's 1.76 angstroms. I was pretty close. Yeah, that's not bad. 1.78, somebody Googled it. <laughs> if you knew that off the top of the head, I'd be impressed. Jachi guessed two, so she nailed that one. Not by price of right rules. <laughs> That's what we do in quals. If you guys didn't know, if you're a grad student, <laughs> quals go by price is right rules. So you can't guess over the number. Do kids today even know price is right? It still exists. I know it still exists, but like, is it a mainstay like it was for us on sick days? Probably not because there's, you know, the internet. other television. Oh yeah, yeah and the internet. Did you forget about the drug lord that employs an army of clowns with knives? I did. Because there they are. You can still outrun those guys? Yes. Whoa! <laughs> I'm getting wrecked. <laughs> man, I can't wait for you to see the big boss man at the end. Could be great. Can I not go out that door? Not while they're punching you. Is that the rule? I have no idea. Do you need a key card? I had a key card. Does it work in every door? It works in the door. Oh, maybe I have to exit here. No. Get me out of here. This game. It's so unrealistic. <laughs> you can't jump eight feet in the air. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Firecrackers. Nice. Nice. I mean, that's tough. That's the, like, it seems like you should know that, but, I mean, that's a non-trivial question, right? Bond links and things like that. That is a, that is a very trivial question. It's just well, I mean, number. but to get the actual number right, like, off the top of your head is pretty crazy. Like, I think the safe answer is between 1.5 and 2 angstroms. You could answer for any of those, but... What's the bond length? What's the OH bond length in water? Uh, longer, presumably. What? Um, not longer than 1.76. Longer than like carbon-carbon bond. What is it? 1.4. It's like what in water? It's yeah. Like point. It's like 0.95. Or is it really? Is that like short? That. Somebody Google that one. Tangle. <laughs> What's the answer? Zero point nine seven. Look at that. I'm surprised it's that short. Oh, I got hit by a car. A car that's smaller than me. It's like one of the it's like one of your daughter's cars. The <laughs> remote control one. That is a clown with a knife. Should we just teach it's it a lesson? Oh clowns. god. They have blood. This is Nintendo. This is like nineteen eighty eight Nintendo. Look at the blood. <laughs> 
There's a lot of criminals in this town. Yeah, no. Uh, this has been taken over by the baddies. The drug lord has his own building called Mr. Big International. Oh, I should have started the timer. I'm speedrunning this. <laughs> The way he walks. <laughs> Do you like this? <laughs> the squat walk is even better. Have you ever I been on a committee where student outright failed? Yes. I have been on a PhD committee where the PhD candidate failed. That was not a fun event either. So I need to take on a guy in a wheelchair, and I need to kill him repeatedly here. Why are you spoiling it? <laughs> Spoilers? Are you you're upset? You wanted to see Mr. This Big? Is it Mr. Big? Mr. Uh, Big I guy? I think it's Mr. Big, but I don't know for sure because I fight Mr. Big later too. Was he in a wheelchair? No, later. Uh, yeah, Ecstatica. They are definitely better. Although some of the foot had guns, but they shot at the ground. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They could only... They, they're like the stormtroopers of foot soldiers. Or do I have this card already? Have I'm you watched an idiot. Hmm? Mandalorian yet? No, not yet. Why? Wait. You're just talking about foot so, uh, stormtrooper guns. Bad shots. <laughs> Oh, I think, I think I have all the key cards up to a certain point. <laughs> These bad guys are... I mean, the stereotypes in this are much better. Want to see me blow up a clown with a rocket launcher? <laughs> <laughs> launched off the screen. That was great. I had to bust that one out. All right. Blue card. We're good. Man, the end boss of this is just the pinnacle of gaming. Are you ready? I don't think you're ready. I don't think I am. Is that him? That is, um... Uh, Mr. Big Level 1 is the guy in the wheelchair. I just wasted a rocket. Did you need that rocket? Nope. These guys keep appearing indefinitely. The only thing I have to shoot are the dogs. Also, you have inf infinite lives. That's true. Oh, he's got a picture of himself. But not infinite bullets. <laughs> there he is. Uh, so you don't have infinite bullets. I don't. So it's still possible for, possible for you to lose this game? Uh, not possible. It, it'll just go really slow if I... I agree that you're hyping up the boss too much. I also agree that this is the best thing. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we go. I got him. Oh, but that's guy. only one shot. I need to shoot him three more times or two more times. The thing is I can get bullets off of these guys. Not the dogs. Nope. The dogs just get shot. I think you have 99 rockets. Oh, I do. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed him. Rocked to look at him crawling. <laughs> All right, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> now he's done. Now he dissolves into a key card. What? <laughs> oh, you didn't know? Wait, this boss is the best thing you've ever seen. I promise. <laughs> Mr. Big lives. <laughs> what? It's like Toy Story. <laughs> so I gotta hit him in the like top hat with the rocket. And he just rides. Come on. 
Tell me that is not the most amazing bad guy you've what ever seen. What is he seen. spitting? That's his tongue. He's spitting his tongue? <laughs> He's spitting his tongue. That's what drugs will do to you. <laughs> no, he doesn't do his own stash. He just uses the money to create super... So I gotta hit him like in the glasses. It's, it's something weird. It's jank as hell. Come on. I don't know how this boss works, but you have to like hit him in the glasses with the rocket. So the jumping thing <laughs> doesn't seem to be cutting it. Can you do it by changing your Y position? I don't know. Ecstatic, was this everything you were hoping for? <laughs> the giant head shooting thing. Yeah, two players is easier because one can fix the It doesn't the seem like you can shoot in the air. I think I can. Like a thousand times. There it is, right? Did I hit him in the glasses? Yeah, you can shoot him in the air. I just gotta get him at the right time and I'm not good. It's like you gotta hit him in the top of the head. Before it was the glasses. I don't know, do you think the hitbox really matters on this? Ah, this is why this boss is so Well, you so only terrible. have 86 more rockets. <laughs> Scuzzbot thinks it's easier with two players. It is easier with two players. Alright, <laughs> shot it right over him. See, I should get the second controller in Eugene, and then you could join. I'm just a host, man. How is that not his eyes? I don't know. I don't know the rules of this game. Okay. Maybe try on the bottom of the screen. Doing exactly your strategy, but up on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> Not, Not like this. Mouth. Not like this. <laughs> Alright, we're going to try to get ourselves some distance. <laughs> this is the worst thing that's ever happened in gaming. Oh no, you, you're mistaking me. I do not love this game. I Why chose are you back it. at the top of the screen? Because <laughs> I made a suggestion. All right. God. Come on, come on. That was close. Was it? <laughs> it was, it was close. <laughs> people, I mean, it's people. close. It's close in that a rocket left your gun. <laughs> how do you have 84 still? I'm not shooting that many rockets. I don't know how to yeah, hit them. Yeah, you had 82 like a minute ago. Should I just keep shooting them in the face? See how it That's unfolds. That's not going to do it. You've got multiple face palms over here. <laughs> They're not wrong. Like, this is doing nothing to Give him. Give me the remote. This is doing nothing. You're killing him. All right. You want it? All right. Go to I don't tap. know how to play. What do I do? Tapping his jump and tapping his rocket. Which? <laughs> it's so smooth in its handling. <laughs> you should look at this screen. That one's I would, three seconds behind. I would like to... Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Okay. I would like to point out this game is harder than it looks. <laughs> Uh, oh man. Stop it shooting me. How do I shoot a rocket? Uh, tap A. I don't want to hold do this it. Anymore. No, no, it's terrible. <laughs> we assumed this was easy. So you get a reset on bullets. That's kind of fun. You have 82 rockets again. You got a reset. Yeah, I died. Uh, is this your. Did you think to put that in your game, Genie? No. That's just the reset you get when you die. You get 99 rockets every time you die. This is very realistic. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I feel strongly that you should be at the bottom of the screen, or not at the top. All right, we'll try the bottom of the screen. Colin, you should look up how to beat this boss. I thought I knew, I clearly do not. <laughs> but he's everything you guys hoped for, make no mistake. Yeah, just blast him back. Like, so here's the thing, you hit him in the right spot and all of a sudden it reveals his skull and you have to shoot his right, spine so out. so jump and do it again. Blast jump, the jump. sunglasses. Am I not doing that? I feel like at the top... Am I not hitting the sunglasses right now? I mean, it looks like the sunglasses. Blast the sunglasses of his face. But, like, I am. I'm not quitting this game until I beat it. <laughs> you have 10 minutes. No, I, have, I will continue playing until I beat this guy. Am I crazy? Am I not hitting the sunglasses? Clearly you're not. Alright. Here. You hold this. <laughs> Where are you going? He's getting his good control. How do I shoot a... Okay, how do I jump? <laughs> I tap. Blast his eyes after the sunglasses come off. Yep. Alright, I'm gonna pause this momentarily. Hey, I was just about to kill him. I'm gonna add a second controller. <laughs> We're gonna two player this. Oh no, it won't enter. <laughs> Oh, it won't let me do a second controller. All right, you're on your own. Get off of me. Random question, I thought the stream was supposed to be Friday. No. We might do another one on Thursday for graduate recruiting, but no, the plan was Mondays. I don't know why we chose Mondays for several of these, but... Look at that guy. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, here we'll... Now we have timer. Now there's pressure. Now the audience needs closure. Get off of me, dude. Jump. Did that, Cam? <laughs> no, it's sorry. I just went and watched a video. You have to jump and shoot him in the face, and they typically do it at the top of the All screen. Right. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that controller. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a great job. Uh -huh. Strut, 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 strut. 
Yeah, there you go. The speedrunners do this in two shots. Back up, back up. Yeah, so spine, so if we get the skull revealed, then it's just shots to the torso. There is no torso. How is that not a glasses shot? <laughs> I don't care. The boss was everything you hoped for. How did we pick up a watcher? You were I <laughs> got him. We got him. Reveal your spine so I might shoot it. Yes. yes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this game is proof our war on drugs failed. You are 100% correct. We have exact evidence for it. Look at that boss. Oh, I ran out of bullets. I'm going to die. Just so I get a refresh. There's literally no way you could beat this game without Game Genie. No, the speedrun beats... You. No, There's me. <laughs> no way. You could There's no way. Game. Me. <laughs> See? One of his vertebrae. One of his vertebrae. Another one. Oh. We got this. We're getting. We're so close. Speed strats. <laughs> Am I shooting his spine anymore? I don't even know. Like he doesn't have weapons anymore. He's just a giant head on a spine. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the record on this game is 9 minutes and 28 seconds. Are you kidding me? You've only been playing for 4. I've, I've been playing this boss for 4. <laughs> <laughs> Am I not hitting his vertebrae? This guy's about how many people have submitted times. Yes! <laughs> Do I have to pick up a bar or just I have a bar? Free gold. Free gold. <laughs> this is 24,000 gold, whatever that means. 24,000 grams. Jackpot. The sector is jackpot. 24k gold. <laughs> Dollars. 10 listed on one player. So you could have the top 11 time. <laughs> no, not with Game Genie. Oh, Too many point. deaths. I gotta have less deaths. Oh man, I feel like I've accomplished something today. That was the training mission. <laughs> Contact your <laughs> local DEA recruit. Oh, here's the best part of this game. And I learned this reading out about the history of the game. So it turns out if you put ass as your identity, it doubles your points. <laughs> Victory for everyone involved. It stands for Ask a Scientist. <laughs> Ask the Scientist. Mm -hmm. Ask the Scientist. <laughs> All right, so uh, I was wondering what was over right. his head. It's a helmet. Yeah, out. They're wearing helmets. They have guns. Just Say No is the, the bumper or the, the license plate. All right, put Mario in. We have three minutes to kill. Oh, I have to kill it. We've completely abandoned science questions, but Trot24, thank you for following um, <laughs> you came in at a weird time when we were completing NARC, but if you have any science questions, feel free to ask them now. <laughs> I'm here for the NARC. <laughs> People are joining for NARC. We get more followers for NARC than we do for science. We're just going to try to do a quick Mario speed run. Oh, oh that was a close 380. It was not. It was close. I want to clip the pipe. All the research that can be done with that gold. I gave a presentation at like a bar, one of the like beer and science whatever events, and I did a breakdown of F-35s versus funding for a research group. It's pretty depressing when you think about military and war on drugs versus science funding. It is not a sunny disposition. All right, you think I'm going to get this? No. I am not. 
I have infinite lives on this, so don't worry. I'm gonna do speed strats. I know, but I'm gonna do speed strats till I get them. I don't do safe mode. Damn it. <laughs> it's literally impossible for you to finish before 11. It is true. I'll keep playing, don't worry. Trot 24, you have questions. Man, was Narc Boss everything you hoped it would be? More. Like in I retrospect, nobody ever does. Like they just have the, the drug stereotypes and then they have that coming. <laughs> Speed strats greater than safe strats. You hear that, Eugene? That's true in all aspects of life. <laughs> but you don't do pipe jumps. I don't. All right, I might have to and do I a don't safe strat. I don't even know what my ranking is anymore. Am I even in the top 500? Man, I don't know what I bumped down to, but I was I was 176 and now I'm like, I am excited for AGDQ 2021. I don't know what those letters and numbers mean. It's, uh, I don't know what A is, but it's games done quick. Hmm. What does A stand for in that? All Fuck, the I games gotta, done All right, quick. I'm just gonna get the shell through so we can get through this level, cause I'm clearly amateur. Awesome, games done quick. Well, now I have to watch it. What? Here's, you deserve that. All right, pipe jump, ready? Don't do it. Ah! It took you 10 minutes to get through the level. <laughs> I'm speed stratting every level. We have nothing to lose here. You stopped and waited for the turtle shells I you did. didn't even use. Oh, you did it that time. Ooh, we got it. Oh, I missed that one, though. Am I on record pace, Eugene? No. If I click the pedal three minutes from now, I will be. <laughs> <laughs> it's all online, right? The, 20, the AGDQ 2021. You know, this, this level was the bane of our existence when we were younger, and then we learned that it's the easiest speedrun level. Fast. Yeah, you just run as fast as you can. Don't get mushrooms, don't get anything. Just jump over everything. Mm, and I kind of disagree about don't get anything. All right. It's been a while since I played this. You think I'm gonna get the wrong warp? Um, yes, but not on your first try. I, I don't think I have an option. If I miss it, we're done. That was a bump. Another bump. Oh, There's shit. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see that one coming. I rarely hit that one. I'm 245 now. I was 176. That's crazy. In a year, I've dropped that many places in Mario speedrunning. Could you please tell me what quantum supremacy is? I've never done warpless. I should. I should probably try to commit at some point. All right, pipe jumps. You ready, Eugene? I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. No safe strats here. Man, Warpless is something else. Like, playing 19 minutes. What is the record right now? It's 19 minutes or it's 18 something. But playing that flawlessly for 18 minutes. 441, top 450. God, all right, safe strat. You're 441? Oh. It's a secret. Ugh. Why is your email Vestib? Oh man, that is a good question. So so Vestib is an entirely made up word. So in high school I took four years of Spanish and there were like four of us that took Spanish nonstop for four years. And one was Brian Stadensky and he would, uh, anytime the teacher would go off in Spanish, he would respond with and he would end every sentence with Vestibidistoy. And so I adopted the word vestibidistoy. I'm going to safe strat this. Oh, you coward. <laughs> I 
You like the one step jump? Yeah, do you, do you usually do that? No. Oh, speed awesome strat this. there. No! <laughs> 1859 is the record for warpless. But yeah, Vestibitstoy was a made-up word, so I adopted that as my email, which is my 20-year-old Yahoo email account. Vestibitstoy. Ooh, there it is. Ready? First and third. Two Goombas. Oh, we're on world record pace on this one. Star. Doing it. No! <laughs> Stopped short. All right, I'm gonna play it safe up here just to beat it. Oh my god. That was, a, so, that was a 200 pace right there. I don't think I've ever done better than 195. <laughs> no, my Spanish is not a good enough. I haven't used it for 20 years. Like that's the tragedy of like taking a whole lot of Spanish. Oh, that was gross whole lot of Spanish in high school. If you don't use it, you just lose it entirely. Does that make you uncomfortable going bottom route? I, you know, I've never optimized. That made me uncomfortable. I never <laughs> optimized this level, so everything you do is uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, Colin's message. Vasti Barkon. So there was a guy named Vasti B. Barkon that would constantly, they would send emails to me for Vasti B. Barkon. Do you have your copy of Battletoads? I do. Trot24 is a friend from ages ago, and he's wondering if you, he or she, he's wondering if you still have your copy. I do, I have a hard copy of Battletoads. <laughs> so David Collins, if you go back to, uh, go to our Ask a Scientist YouTube page, he played Battletoads and got maybe a quarter of the way through in three hours with Game <laughs> Genie. <laughs> All right, so this was the hardest level of the eights growing up because there was like you either did it or you didn't oh beautiful <laughs> i've always heard you were or are a moderator of our chemistry is that true Yes, that, that is true. I was a moderator for our chemistry until my until I started a faculty job. And then I just kind of fell out of it. Oh. oh, that was clean. That was clean. You still don't do the click? No, I, I've done it like once. All right, swimming, we got this. Oh. Nope, <laughs> missed that. Speed strats. We're playing it safe. Even All right, you guys are ready for this? Two frame. Oh. No! <laughs> Damn it. All right. Everything about that was terrible. Man, it, it sucks. Like I used to like be heavily involved in our chemistry on Reddit and, and chemistry blog, but just time. I spend so much time writing papers and proposals that I just stopped being involved in the online community. I'm playing Mario. Playing Mario. I used to be better. Went way too far on that one. My record time, I lost at least three tenths on this level. Oh. That was good until then. Yeah, clipped. Over, under, over, under. <laughs> All right. Done. Mission accomplished. 16 minutes. <laughs> 16 minutes. That's not bad. Ecstatica, the answer is no. Speed strats. 
<laughs> is writing a proposal even worth it? Honestly, when your success rate is like one in, I don't know, one in 10, what is it? Something like that. Is it worth it? I, I, I don't know. I'm not convinced, but <laughs> all right. It's 1109. We are beyond our time. Eugene, thank you for stopping by. Um, we're going to do another one on Thursday where Eugene is going to be the guest and I'm going to host and we're going to do it for graduate recruiting and answering questions for graduate school and admissions and applications. Um, anything else you want to say? Invite every undergraduate you know. Yeah, if anyone's interested <laughs> in grad school of any kind, preferably chemistry at FSU, but we'll, we'll take anyone involved. Um, but yeah, swing by on Thursday and we'll, we'll send out some tweets and everything. So um, yeah, thank you for swinging by and we'll see you guys at a future Ask a Scientist Gaming. <laughs>